This is the Biker's Lifestyle Podcast. I'm Dirty. And I'm Tank. Fuck you. And today we're joined <laughs> with our brother Patrick. How's it going, Patrick? Good, good. First and foremost. I just want to say, uh, remember when we had to cancel, we had a different guest come along? This is the motherfucker here who backed out at the last minute. His <laughs> dog died or the cab was late or he had a flat tire. And it was a cat. It was a cat. It was a cat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I never ask why anymore. No. You know, I just assume. Anyways. How you doing during this uh, COVID apocalypse? You know, it is what it is. Just taking it day by day. Yeah, you doing all right? I'm good. You're not getting the quarantine uh, fatigue, <laughs> as they call it? <laughs> you know. You know, none of us are in quarantine, no. man. It's, it's safer at home. It's safer at home. Oh, we're safer at home? Yeah. yeah. Are you safe at home? Besides right now? Besides right well, now. Besides right now. It's our house. It's our house. Yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. home. <laughs> no, this is home. Are, are you learning any new skills? Because all the celebrities on TV are telling us to learn new skills, like fucking play the guitar or fucking work out and get ba- baking bread. Baking get, bread. Have you learned any new school? Have, have you picked up a new skill? A little bit of baking. Have you been baking? What have you been baking? Yeah, and you're I made some cookies. Cookies. Yeah, cookies. He's wow. been smoking weed and baking himself. Come on, guy stuff. Yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah, man. man. Hell yeah. Still yeah, have this goes on any longer, you know, I'm going to go to the gym, start getting swole, too. You, know? you can't go to the gym. Oh, shit. Gyms are shut right. down. Yeah, got to go to yeah. prison, man. Dude, prison, I got prison. I got, dude, I got a weight set up in the garage. <laughs> I got a punching bag, dude. We could train. We can do it. We'll come out of this motherfucker as fucking MMA fighters. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, we're doing it. All right. After, well, not after this. Cause <laughs> it's late, and I got to go home and go to bed. But because I have to work in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Is what it is. So, where are you from? Clinton. Clinton, Wisconsin. Yep. Yep. How long have you been riding motorcycles? Oh, ever since I was a little kid. Uh, my uncle put me on my first bike. I was probably five. Wow. What was it? Uh, it was a Honda Shadow. You rode a Honda F5. Shadow at five? I was sitting up on the tank, had my hand up on the bars. Nice. I mean, yeah. And he was yeah, doing he was, the pedals and yeah, shit? Yeah, he was in control of it. You know, it was just cool to be up front, though. That's safe. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, hey. We're, you know, not CPS, but, uh, so when was your first motorcycle? I bought my first bike. I was probably 15. Yeah. It was a 79 Honda Hawk 400. Wow. And paid 150 bucks for it. Nice. Yeah. And, uh, did you like, well, you're 15, so you can't legally ride no. on the road, but w- w- so where were you riding? Well, you know, ride on the road. And right stuff. on the road. You know, <laughs> <laughs> beating up the back roads. Beating up the back roads. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was a fun little bike. Uh, I didn't ride it long. It was my first one. I was new to it all. And oh, yeah. Up locking it up and uh, locked the motor up, sold it to a guy. Did you mm-hmm. tell him it was locked up? Oh, yeah, he knew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he knew. So, anyways, uh, sold it to him. He ended up chopping it up and making a bobber out of it. Nice. You know? It already 70, is a bobber, yeah, for Christ's sake. You know, 79 so. Honda Hawk, a little cafe racer is what it looked like. Hey, yeah, man, that's awesome. You know, it was a cool little bike, though. Yeah, it's like I said, that was like one of the first bikes I think Honda made that was like just trying to start to move towards what a sport bike was uh, at that point. You know, the late seventies, the Japanese motorcycle really came into its own. Yeah, it, well, it did. I, well, early seventies, really. I mean, look at the like the first H two two stroke Kawasaki. I mean, that thing's a beast to, by today's standards. Yeah, you know, yeah, it is. So, what was your second bike? Uh, 83 Yamaha Maxim 550. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And bought that. Paid about three, 350 bucks for that one. So you upgraded. Oh, a little bit. There you go. Yeah, a little bit. Did you yeah. ride that? Yeah, I rode it around. Yeah. You know, again, beating up the back roads and stuff. <laughs> what got you into motorcycles to begin with? I don't know. I've always been fascinated by motorcycles. I just, you know, like, well, like I said, when I was a little kid, I enjoyed it. Yeah. And uh, ever since then, it was just, I always wanted my own bike. So, how old are you? I'm 30. You're 30? Yeah. So, let's see. So, we're talking, you're 15 years old, so you're in the early 2000s. What, was there something on TV that, like, uh, got you into motorcycles? No, not Or was really. it just I mean, your, like, relatives got you into Yeah, relatives. Nice. Yeah. See, I didn't have anybody. You'll see, because I'm older than you. I'm 40. So, like... You're I'm not 40. I'm 40. You're <laughs> over. I was going to say you're over 40. I just like to say 40. All right. Well, I just feel better. I know how old 41. Oh, shit, if that's the case, I'm 25. I'm 40 and a half. <laughs> wow. 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 I, I didn't even know we were going to go down this road. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Apparently, we're getting into fights after. No, yeah, anyways. Yeah, but, we are. Well, that's why we have uh, boxing gloves behind the bar. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Anyways, but 
<laughs> so, you know, when I got into bikes, I didn't have any relatives ever into bikes really. So I, I like, like certain TV shows and certain movies. I'd see bikers. I'm like, oh, that looks cool as shit, right? Right. right. So it's pretty. You know, it's it's sort of a different animal when you got a, a relative into a bike because you're not jaded. You know, because when I saw bikers on TV, I thought they were the ruffians, the bad boys, yeah. the whatever you want. You know what I mean? Because like, like say, take, uh, take a like the Golden Child with Eddie Murphy. You know, right? Like, the first few scenes in that movie was some bikers, a biker gang, kidnap some kid, right? right? Or you look at like another Forty Eight Hours, another. Eddie Murphy movie, right? The main bad guys were bikers, you know? Mm -hmm. So I always had this fucking idea in my head when I was growing up. It's like bikers were the rough and tough bad boys, mm -hmm. you know? And that was appealing to me because, you know, when you're a younger guy, it's like, oh, I want to be tough, you oh, know? Yeah. I want to be a badass. I want to ride a motorcycle, you know? So it's always interesting to hear how other people get into it, you yeah. know? You know, it's just family. Yeah. So. I always wanted to be that biker like Randall Tex Cobb and the Coen brothers raised in Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. You know, with the you know, the machine gun and the hang grenades going <laughs> off, you know. How you're... about how about Chuck Norris and Delta Force? Well, of course. He, he had that a lot of bike Chuck with Norris. fucking rockets. Oh, that was awesome. You know, I don't know if, if the actual Delta Force actually had rockets on a fucking like enduro bike, but fuck they should have. Hey, and you both know you've seen the back of my bike. It looks like I've got two mortar shells off <laughs> yeah. mortar launchers right, right. off the back yeah. of mine for I, crutches. You know, hey, you know. I don't know, quarter inch steel cool. plate in the bottom, we could probably use them as that, yeah, you know, with yeah. fireworks or something. Yeah, fuck around, find out. Yeah, fuck around, find out. Mine's sitting up on a lift right now. You're going to be <laughs> torn apart. I blew a gasket. Half my motor is sitting at a machine Dirties shop. is down right now. And, and you, you know, you got a new bike now. Yeah. Well, new to you. New to me. You bought it for a club brother. Club brother, yep. Yeah. 2000 Road King. Well, see, we're jumping ahead here because... Oh, uh, oh, well, yeah. we, there's no because, script on this fucking show. Well, what I know there's no script, but I want to get into the fact is when did you get that fucking... That sports Ah, the iron head, the 71 goofy yeah. foot. It actually came after uh, after my Yamaha Maxim. I had a Kawasaki GS 1100. Oh. And it was in pieces. Nice so bike. I, I never got to yeah. put it back together or ride it. So that one didn't last long. Then I bought I bought my first Harley. It was a 71 iron head mm. Sportster. Beautiful bike. Burnt orange color. Yep. <clears throat> and uh, had the solid struts in the back. Oh, it, yeah. 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 Make an uncomfortable bike more uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fun bike. Yeah. And, uh, I ended up going down on that in 2016. Really? Yeah. Went down on it. I was in the hospital for three days with it. Anyways. Uh, they, they let you have the bike in the hospital? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what it sounded like you just said, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. I was I, in the I, hospital I, I, with right now, in my mind, I'm just picturing like this Iron Head Sporty hooked up to a heart monitor. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, a little yeah, IV yeah, in it, you know, a little right. motor oil trickle <laughs> down into it, you know. Yeah. Pull the plug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pull the other one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no no, shit. But anyways, yeah, after I got out of the hospital and stuff, it took me a little bit, but uh, we pieced it back together and did kind of a custom build on it. Yeah. Custom hardtail to it, and uh, mm -hmm. put a little sporty tank back on it. And anyways, 12 inch apes, and uh, you know, rode it for a little while, and then sent it down the road. Sent it, you sent it down to our uh, our dear friend Shaggy. Yes, episode yeah. number five, I believe it yeah. is. Yeah, look it up. Five, that's right. <laughs> um, and then you bought probably the best motorcycle ever, fucking made. <laughs> yeah, I bought the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I bought the old Dirtbag Express. My the Dirtbag Express. Yeah. My old Dyna. Yeah. yeah. Did he sell it to you with the clothespin on, on the choke or without? First of all, I fixed it. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, well, I'm not I'm an, an asshole. Know. I fixed it. Well, you're it. an asshole, but you fixed it. I, well, I'm not a shitty asshole. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. That's yeah. true. I, I'll give you that. Bought the Dirtbag Express and turned it into Patrick's Paddy Wagon. Yeah. Patrick's Paddy. Yeah. Patrick's yeah. Paddy Wagon. Uh, there's a story there, folks. The 2000 <laughs> Super Glide. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Stepping up in the bike. And then he made like the world's worst mistake. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, you upgraded. You upgraded. I can't. I can't lie. You upgraded. Yeah, I bought a 2000 Road King. Nice. Yeah, had the suicide shift on it. Yeah, Widowmaker shift and clutch. Yeah, it's all one piece. Suicide's a little different. Quick yeah. clutch. And, but yeah, that was cool. It definitely took some getting used to. That's the present bike. Yeah. No, and what actually? What did you say to me about that shift? Uh, man wasn't meant to ride a motorcycle with that type of shifter. Is that what you said? What? I think you said that to me last year. You're not meant to ride that way. You were you were having you were struggling with it that day. Yeah. Actually, that was the day of the biker games. 
Oh. So you got this thing in the biker game. So you're, you're riding this motherfucker on grass. Yep. You got yeah. some bitch off the back who's cleaning back and forth trying to get a goddamn hot dog with yeah. ranch dressing on it. Hey, but I did win first place in the, the keg roll with it, though. That's right. Yeah. You did. That's right. You One did. You, you, okay. So back in the day, back when you were probating for the club, we were at a uh, another club's function, another biker party, oh, yeah. and they had biker games. <laughs> And we stuck you in it. We voluntold you yeah, yeah. to uh, enter said biker games, and you actually won controversially a biker keg or a what a keg roll. The keg roll. Yeah, and it, it fucking that dude, your homeboy. Yeah, a buddy of mine. Yeah, he he threw first, a fit. The first time I did it, it was just me and some girl, and I and I won against her. Of course, everybody was giving me shit. Oh, you know. Right He's all proud because he beat a girl, blah, yep. blah, So anyways, I went back, and yeah, uh, a good buddy of mine, he was he was there, and uh, we went at it, and I ended up beating him because his keg, you know, allegedly rolled over into mine and hit mine across the finish line. So we went back, and we did it again, and he got me the second time, but yeah. You won the first one. I did. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say here officially, factually <laughs> speaking, you won that. I did, yeah. On the Dirtbag Express, Dirtbag Express, Victory Lane, Victory Lane. I'm just saying, <laughs> maybe your maybe your special talent is the cable. Well, it might be. It might be. You could go pro. Yeah, you know, pro keg rolling. <laughs> we should so, get that, huh? Is, maybe we should. You know, the Biker Games Channel. You know, hey, if Lumberjack can have you know Lumber, what we could Lumberjack do? Games, right, right, we could build this fucking channel if we have like a Biker Olympics. Ooh, the Biker Olympics. Yeah, think about it, like. Like, it's all biker games, right? Like the hot dog biting fucking chick thing. You got the fucking keg roll, the fucking... Slow roll. The slow roll, yeah. the fucking, you know, whatever the thing you do across the board on the ground. What do you call that? I don't know, whatever. You know what I'm talking about, yeah, right? You yeah. ride on a board, you make sure... Yeah, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. oh do, right, right. Do like a fucking circle of death of some sort, you know, yeah. where there's like a fucking course. We should start that up. How would we start that up? I don't know. Maybe one of our viewers would like to try to get that together for us. We should try to start that up. I mean, we can't do it now because of the fucking COVID apocalypse. You know, we can't really well, we get can that just going. Do it and say, well, like 2021 Biker Games Olympics, right? You know, get yeah, like you know. like all different fucking people from across the country or the world well, if we could get it there. No, I mean we can even refine it. Now think about this, okay? So we can have three different classifications of the of the hot dog. Thing. Yeah. So they start with a big kielbasa. Right, easy okay. to get to, right? And we move to the hot dog, sure. And then the final round would be the little cocktail weenie, little cocktail, weenie. little cocktail weenie. You know, what do you think? Is that for only people that write Japanese books? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, what is his name there from <laughs> Hangover? There, Ken. Oh, oh Ken, yeah, the doctor yeah. with but the little, die? little <laughs> yeah. right on. bitty mushroom dick there. <laughs> That could be borderline racist, but probably. I <laughs> won't be the first time. When he jumps on that trunk. You try to fuck on me? You try to fuck on me? I fuck on you? Uh, I'm sorry, little I'm buddy. Sure. I like Godzilla, too. This is not going to get us any sponsors. <laughs> no, probably not. Pharrell. Pharrell <laughs> up. A&W root beer. Mm -mm. Miller Lite. Miller Lite. Jameson. Jameson. Because mm. Jameson, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. All right, so you had, a, you had a Widowmaker, but you took it off. Why'd you take it off? I guess to me, you know, because... Uh, Tell the fucking truth. Why'd you take it off? Because <laughs> it's a pain in the ass, yeah, that's why. Right, yeah. right. It is. I mean, it just wasn't practical for somebody that rides every day or, you know, all the time. Well, I, I had one on mine, too. I yeah, took I yeah. took mine off. Um, you know, they're fun in the country. Oh, yeah. You're out riding, they're fun. You get in the city. Oh, it's I mean, it's fucking ass. retarded, man. The first time oh, I took that, I get a light. I killed it twice. Sitting here, one hand like this, light. the other hand's down here, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. If the bike doesn't go into neutral and you're sitting there oh, holding yeah. it with your hand. And, yeah, I mean, it was cool, you know, and like, you know, it, it's not hard to switch, you know, it takes probably 20, 25 minutes, I could have it all switched back over. Yeah. You no, know, if I did want to go to a bike show, because actually when I first bought the bike, uh, a week after I had it, I went to a bike show and won first place with it, and the only thing that sold the bike was that, that shifter, that's what everybody liked about it. Yeah, I still have mine in the box, yeah, you're right, yeah. it doesn't take long to put them on. No. Did you get a trophy? Actually, I did. Nice. I got a trophy. Oh. Wow, yeah. Patrick with another plastic trophy. Yeah, nice, man. another plastic one to hang on my show. Man, you are just a sex symbol <laughs> of this fucking club. <laughs> you just are young. Yeah. Got the fucking non-gray beard. Yeah, a little bit over here now, but you know. 
winning trophies, <laughs> winning, winning a, trophies. just being awesome, just being awesome. No, do what I gotta do. That's your, right. your real name's not Patrick. We're all calling him Patrick, but that's your road name. Yeah. All right. You want to tell everybody how you ended up with that name? <clears throat> you don't have to. <laughs> well, anyways, I mean, it's not, not like we call you Stinky or something. Yeah, right. You know? I mean, that and that's a name <laughs> that kind of sticks with you. Uh, when I was a probate, uh, there was actually my my real name is Zach. And when I probated, there was a another brother. His name was Zach also. I know. I originally, I had Zach, and then I had other Zach. There were other <laughs> Zach in my yeah. time. So anyways, we were uh, we did our, our probate period together. And anyways, uh, it was hard. You know, every time somebody said Zach, we both turned and looked, blah, blah, blah. Well, anyways, he actually uh, really liked SpongeBob. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I like SpongeBob too. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah. you know, SpongeBob he got to keep cool. his Come name on, Zach, and they started calling me Patrick just to separate us. Well, Patrick is the uh, starfish character, the starfish, that's SpongeBob's yes. sidekick. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, anyways, over time, it just stuck, and here I am with Patrick. Well, I mean, it's you could have worse nicknames. I could, yeah. Beaker. But, um, <laughs> but Don, Donkey, Donkey, yeah, you yeah. he, he hated his name so much. Oh, it's, you know, I mean, <laughs> that's the whole thing about motorcycle clubs. I mean, it's, we're not nuanced, you know what I mean? It's not like we're deep thinkers when it comes to giving somebody a nickname. It's one, you fuck up, yeah. or two, there's some embarrassing shit about you, or three, you're just victim of your own circumstance. You just happen to be good friends with a guy who likes Spongebob, yeah. so we or, started calling you Patrick. Was, there's, <laughs> there's number four, you're grandfathered in with a name because that's what everybody You come in it. with a name, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. was lucky that way because I've been tanked since high school football. So. Oh, it's like, you know, why do they call you dirty? And it's like, because he. I mean, well, <laughs> I've, I've heard so many explanations yeah. as to why. My favorite is when he looks some stranger dead in the face and says, it's because I like every bit of raunchy fucking porn that's out there. Yeah. Like, you name it, man. Bestiality. I got it. You like, and the yeah. person was just like looking at him like, what the fuck? The only way I take my temperature is wreck them. Hey, you know what I mean? that's what I'm going to tell the next door that wants to take my, I'm going to like, yeah, wrong end, brother. You want to take my wrong temperature end. before yeah. I go in? Yeah. I want the correct temperature, not one right. in my mouth. That's right. Right? right? <laughs> like make COVID the most, 19, make the most of it, you know? You know temperature and shit. Blow in my ear first. <laughs> right. Just drive up and just hang your ass out the window. Here, take my temperature. Yeah, no work. shit. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty much immune. I've been to so many different clubhouses that I'm pretty sure that I'm immune to right. everything that this planet can throw at me. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, biker bars, gas station, like the places that we have to go use the restroom as oh. bikers. It's uh, it's a little suspect. Sometimes. Well, fucking that episode with me and Miho, we talked about the crackhead motel. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like I'm pretty sure I'm immune <laughs> like, to everything on this planet. <laughs> if I don't have it, I'm cured. Oh, I remember gosh. going to this bar. It's on in like Rydot, Wisconsin, in the middle of fucking nowhere, like north of Platteville. Mm -hmm. It's called Freddy's Ch Last Chance Saloon. Mm -hmm. like, and you ride into this town, and you're like, you see all these houses. You don't see any people. You don't see anything moving around. You're like, Did, like a neutron bomb go off in here? Like <laughs> Chernobyl. <laughs> Chernobyl. And then like you come up to this brick building, and there's like some hippie chick in there. So I'm like, man, it smells like a restroom in here. And then I go to use the restroom, and it's like a mop sink yeah. for the men. And I'm like. What do I do? Like, what if it's, what if I got a shit? Do I like stomp it down the drain or something? Waffle stomp it. Waffle <laughs> stomp. Like, that's man, I was worried for myself. Mean, that's right? the best thing about being on the road, though, is running into those places. You well, know, when you're out there on the fucking in the fucking thick of it, you know, you're riding across the country, you're going to state to state or whatever, you're taking the back roads, you're running these little ass fucking towns, these little ass fucking gas stations that haven't fucking had an update since the '60s. <laughs> if that's you're the lucky. best fucking yeah. part. Yeah. Or when you're in those fucking gas stations, they have the live bait. Like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, you walk in and you expect to see, like, you know, chips and soda and fucking whatever else that you would normally see in a convenience store. And they have just tanks of bait <laughs> and, like, four different types of fucking drinks. You have water, milk, cola, and, like, another cola. You know what I mean? Right. And that's it. That's all there is to it. And you're like, all right, well, I guess I'm getting a cola. And I'm going to fucking 
have a you know a conversation briefly with explaining what I'm doing with the fucking townie that hasn't seen a guy on a motorcycle in the past two months. Hey man, where are you from? Well, you know, <laughs> oh, just uh, riding through. It's just, uh, yeah, well, you're on a motorcycle, aren't oh, you? Oh, my, ain't that dangerous? Don't go handlebar, make your arms tired. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Wisconsin does offer yeah, itself no, up some some real interesting places. Like I. We were heading up to Green Bay. No, no, it was Tomahawk, Wisconsin. This must have been 15 years ago. Yeah. And the store said, uh, let's see, cheese, fireworks, porn, and karate supplies. And I looked at my wife and I said, that sounds like, I said, that sounds like some fucking hopped up date, man. <laughs> it does. Let's get some cheese, some fireworks, some porn, and some karate supplies, man. Fucking hell. Fuck, I need some lube and we're there. Look at that chicken you move right next door. Yeah. I gotta run down to the gas station real quick, get me some fucking nunchucks. And right? <laughs> and that, folks, is rural Wisconsin. That's right. Wisconsin. <laughs> Wisconsin. Yeah. We love Wisconsin. Fucking Wisconsin. It's Wisconsin's only cool like May to October. After that, it kind of sucks. Unless you're a fucking like hunter or a snowmobile guy. But yeah, it's true. I mean, well, like, it's definitely a, a sportsman's paradise. That's it's a sportsman's sure. paradise as far as hunting goes because you got, I mean, you got just about any wild animal you could think of that you want to shoot. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you're just like into riding, like me, you know, like I don't, I don't hunt. I fucking always talk about getting into hunting, but I'm too fucking lazy to. Yeah, you actually have to work at hunting. <laughs> I just, yeah, I'm work. just like, man, I don't. And then I if mean, you gotta, kill it, you got to drag it out. I mean, that's not the problem. All right, first of all, that's not like the big thing that bothers me about hunting. It's the fact that all our game here is like a waiting like type game. You know what I mean? Unless you go up like way up north and you start trying to track boar or you're trying to fucking hunt coyote, it's a waiting game. Go into the woods, earliest fuck in the morning, before the sun comes up. Find a good spot, sit, wait. Dude, I can't wait. I'm like the most anxious <laughs> fucking person. Like People are like, are you into fishing? Because you're, you're a fisherman. Oh, yeah, I love to fish. And you got the fishing poles. You start, yep, there you go. Professional, Professional hooker. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but um, I make my own custom fishing. You do. Poles. That's right. Are you going to start, are you going to fucking get a, like a deal going where you're making fishing poles and you're selling them? Like Actually, website? what I'm, I'm working on now is a fishing pole that breaks down and fits in saddlebags for bikers. Nice. That's cool. right. You got a name figured out? For the rod or for my, my fishing poles? Well, like the company name. Tanks Custom Rods. Hmm. And every custom rod comes with a black penis fishing lure. Nice. <laughs> no, I actually have my really? Oh, yeah, yeah. I had That's cool. You could open up. Dude, I always thought about, like, you could, like, open up, like, a bait shop and call it Master Baits and Tackle. You know, that's actually a good idea, and I've got, I've got the cards in my wallet, actually. That's a place down in Florida called Master Bait and Tackle. Sorry, they beat you to it. Motherfuckers. I know it, it's the Stay obvious. Late in a dollar short. What it's the do? obvious. But what are you gonna do? Wisconsin's a trip, though. That's for oh, darn no. sure. Dude, you know my favorite place to ride, and I've been around the country here and there. You know, I'm not gonna say I've been everywhere, but I've been enough places to say that one of my favorite places to ride is the UP of Michigan, the Upper UP of Michigan. I still get a fucking, I don't know, I still get a tingly feeling when I ride around up there. It's a land of extremes, though. Well, it's. Well, yeah, but here's what I like about it. Super hot, super humid, super cold. Big, well, huge, could like, be all locusts. In one day. All in one day. No shit. Go ahead. But that's the thing. Like, you know, when you're up there, I mean, from where we are, it's only like six hours tops, right? And you're almost in another fucking world, you know? Another yeah, country. Well, I mean, it's like... Once you hit early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, once you hit... <laughs> Fuck. For all of our listeners that don't know where we are, Google it. But um, well, what you're talking, I do you want to do you want to talk about your little ride up there for uh, a Brook Club Brothers wedding we had? Got people from the club going up there with families. Dirty's the only one that rides. Yeah. Well, first of all, <laughs> first, yeah. So we had a club brother. He's from up there. He's no longer in the club. He had to step away for family reasons. But at the same time, you know, I still consider him a brother. I still oh, talk oh, to him yeah. on a regular Absolutely. basis. Yeah. But. Um, you know, he, he, he needs minders. That's yeah. why. <laughs> <laughs> Shit fucking happens, man. Sometimes <laughs> life gets in the way of fucking being who you want to be. But, anyways, so he gets married, and he decides to have his wedding up in uh, the UP. Girly Point, <laughs> dude. It was like that fucking was a, up there, man. Yeah, it dude. sure was. It was fucking 
hotter and more humid up there than it was down Any there. more north, you're in Canada. You're yeah, in, we you're, are right on Lake Superior. Right, right on yeah, Lake Superior. Right on Lake, right on Lake Superior. Google it. But um, it's worth a Google. Because everything said in the biker's life is true. And I told him, it's factually speaking. It's actually speaking. That's right. Google it. But um, so he, you know, he, you know, he's in the club and he's like, I want to get married up in uh, where I'm from, up in the UP. And I'm like, man, I'm gonna ride your fucking wedding. No matter what, I'm riding your fucking wedding because you know you gotta represent, you gotta show class, you gotta fucking do what you gotta do. Well, it, the day of the fucking wedding, see, in in the UP, you gotta understand, even though his wedding was in August. It still got down in the fucking 40s when the sun went down. Oh, it snows in August. Yeah. It? It's <laughs> and it just so happened that this particular fucking weekend that he was getting married, it was like calling nothing but storms. The entire fucking, like, like Thursday to Sunday was like storms, Torrential. like like severe weather. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, you know, calling for it from months out. Like they knew like this fucking weekend is going to be just hammered dog shit. Right. I'm like, fuck it, I'm riding up there. And everybody else kind of, I don't want to say smarter, because uh, I rode up there myself. <laughs> I'm going to say pushed out. And I was the only one that fucking rode their fucking motorcycle up there, down gravel fucking roads and yeah. fucking, you know, a tsunami. Fucking tree branches flying across the fucking interstate. Well, they had like tornadoes. They had a fucking straight. Up, like it went green, you know. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. was like I had to pull over because I couldn't yeah. fucking see where I was going anymore. Was that on the way up there, on the way back, on the way oh. back, on the way, on the way up there, the way it was up. just a steady hardcore rain. Yeah. Like there was a group of like off roaders. Like they had like you know jacked up Jeep Cherokees and right, shit like right. that. You know they were gonna overland whatever the fuck they were gonna do, camp. I don't know, but um, like. We like ran into each other and like 200 miles from the UP mm -hmm. and they looked at me like I was crazy and they were like, oh man, aren't you getting wet? Which is one of those what stupid do you think? things <laughs> that water, everybody, I got drips of water on my nose. <laughs> yeah, right. the fuck do yeah. you think Why is wet? it that every fucking asshole at a gas station, when you're riding a motorcycle and it's fucking right and has to ask you, oh, are you getting wet? They, yeah, don't fucking they all remind wet. you of the weather. Like you don't know what's going yeah. on. You know? Oh man, doesn't this suck? Uh, uh, you know, kind of. But at the same time, I'm hardcore, so not really. You know, I'm a man. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Anyways, but yeah, man, fucking, I was the only one that rode up there. And uh, I hit fucking weather like you wouldn't fucking believe. Like, it was like a steady downpour pretty much two-thirds of the ride up there. He was on miserable. The, yeah. Uh, yeah, on the way back, there's tornado warnings. I'm hearing oh. fucking sirens when I pull over on the side of the road because I can't fucking see yeah. the sideways yeah. rain. I remember coming back. It was that, bad. That crosswind and everything like that. Oh, yeah, you couldn't even you see. You guys weren't, weren't far behind us. I remember that. Yeah, I had people following me. It was like point, yeah. I mean, yeah. cars were parked underneath the overpasses, and you're still riding by. Yeah, I'm like fucking blasted <laughs> fast on the motorcycle. Yeah, yeah. Pussies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they're man. like, idiot. <laughs> yeah. Eat shit. Fucking I'm hardcore. What do you want? Yeah, to do? hey, it was a good weekend, though. You it know? was a good weekend. Man, first of all, let's be honest. A biker fucking wedding. I don't give a shit how, I don't know, suburban you try to make it, where you have the cake and the fucking first dance, and you know, and you do all that shit. Man, you, you inject, like, a bunch of bikers, it's going to start taking a turn. It was, it, it was like bikers meet hunters in, in yeah, black leather yeah. and camouflage. Oh, man. It's so funny watching, like, normal people being around bikers when we're really getting after it, you do, know? Do you remember the cool that, that they had up there to yeah. hold all the beer? It yeah. was a canoe. Yeah. 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 They had a canoe <laughs> with just ice and beer. That was yeah. just one of them. Yeah. They had, like, big tubs you'd, like, you, you put for horses yeah. to drink water yeah. out of that were full of beer. Oh, yeah. And we're climbing trees yep. and fucking jumping over fire pits. <laughs> yeah, you know, half sticks of the dynamite are going off. Half sticks of dynamite. It was great, man. It was loads of fun. Yeah, it's America. Good biker yeah, fun. That's America. You know America, what I mean? America. Goddamn right, man. It was, right, man. Yeah, it was yeah, a good man. time. Fucking hey. But yeah, we partied hard as fuck. We got married. And uh, yeah. So. Yeah, well. So what about you? What tell us a biker tell story. Us, tell us a biker story. Tell, tell us a cool fucking story about motorcycles and Patrick. 
Oh, look, I just touched my nose. Oh, where's the fucking Purell? Oh, yeah. Purell up, Purell up. Purell up. Oh, okay. oh, I'm gonna Purell. I'm not gonna light you myself on up? fire this yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, fuck yeah, man. Purell up. Make sure you douche your nuts. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Purell. You know, you know. Real quick, I did. I did say. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> briefly, we were going to talk about midgets and midget porn. Midget, midget porn. Midget porn. We'll midget. tell that story after you tell your story about a cool biker thing oh, that you did man. with bikes. Oh, oh. Motorcycles. It's got to be hardcore. Otherwise, hardcore? The rubs, otherwise, the rubs won't fucking Ooh. consider it hardcore enough. I'd have to say, what was it? Was it last year? Me and you were out riding December 26th. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the day after Christmas. The we went riding. Christmas, we decided to go out on our bikes. And, it's a uh, balmy, like, 42 degrees yeah. outside. Yeah. Here we leave Janesville and... We decide we're gonna go to Darien, Wisconsin, and you know, stop and have some beers. And we everything. didn't just go like we were in. Well, I think didn't we go to Milton too? Edgerton, yeah. Milton. Evan, we were all over. The yeah, we, we put over. about we were a hundred plus miles that day. But anyways, I yeah, it's we very we ended, cold weather. Yeah, yeah, very cool. We ended at uh, well, see, it's at Farmers Inn. Right. Well, here's the thing. It was forty two degrees, like. You know, at three thirty in the fucking afternoon. Yeah, when right? we decided to leave. Now, when that sun goes down, <laughs> yeah, it turns into story. like fucking thirty-one degrees. Uh, Real okay. quick, I want no joke. Yeah, I do. I remember when I was riding home, there was flurries. I, I definitely <laughs> yeah. got got hit with it too. Like I'm like, all right, shit, it's fucking snowing. Yeah, I was like a mile, <laughs> like a mile outside of Clinton, all of a sudden, yeah. like snow and hail and everything else just started coming down. Just beat the shit out of me. I'll take, like, I'll take you know, snow over hail driving. I literally come into Clinton, you know, and I, I turn onto my road, and the road is just covered like sheet of ice. I literally slid around that corner. Yeah, right up. I was like, nice. Fucking, yeah, I remember. Rode all the way until December 26th. It's great Yeah. Year. Fuck, dude. I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's the thing about the Midwest, or the upper Midwest. And, I, you know, I don't want to talk shit about guys that live. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, I don't want to talk shit about guys who live down south, but if you're in the like the like the northern part of America, you know, and you're in a colder climate, dude, you you got to fucking love goddamn motorcycles to fucking put two or three fucking layers on and go ride around oh, yeah. in the nut meat of fucking December just because there's no snow on the ground and there's fucking the ability to ride. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you got to love that shit. I love that shit. Mm -hmm. You know, fuck it, man. If fuck, man, I wish my bike wasn't fucking broke, but you know, right. shit happens. But I mean, if it's if it's feasible for me to ride, I'm gonna try to ride. I mean, I'm not stupid. I mean, I used to be stupid back in the day where I would fucking ride all the fucking time. But now I'm kind of more cautious because I have like you know responsibilities. Yeah. You know. The wife would be pissed if I was laid up for fucking six months because I decided to go riding when there was shit on the ground and I slid underneath a semi and got fucked up. Responsibility is a big responsibility. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. But. Yeah, yeah the weather can get, get a little rough. I mean, I, I, we've all been caught out in snowstorms, ridden through snow. And oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, ice, it's, whatever. You know. I, mean, I worked with a guy that rode year round. Year fucking round, you yeah. know? And he had a. What the fuck was it? It was like a Virago, a Yamaha Virago. And it had, a, a, they weren't like off-road tires, but they were like all-terrain tires. Yeah, like a little bit of a knobby. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah it's like, like tires it's, on a Enduro, like on off-road? No, well, kind of. They're not as, they're not as big. They're not yeah. as big. It's like a, like, like a, what would come on like a, like a factory adventure bike, like okay. some sort of like BMW adventure bike or KTM adventure bike, like that. A tiger. Like, yeah, like a tiger. Like it's, it's just a big meaty looking tiger, or medium tire. Yeah, man, a tiger king. Tiger <laughs> king, by the way. If you haven't watched fucking Tiger King, don't watch fucking Tiger You'll King. You'll lose IQ points. I don't give a shit. It. It's the best thing on fucking Netflix right it's now. It's not the best thing on Netflix. No. Carol <laughs> fucking Baskin. No, you're gonna get <laughs> to the. Carol you're gonna get three quarters away through that motherfucking go. Why? What am I watching? And by that time, you got to see it through the end, and then you're fucked. You quit drinking. That's why you don't like Tiger King. That's your problem. Is that what it is? I think so. As I'm going to tell you right now, I watched that show. One, instantly feel better about being me. Well, I did feel good about that. Yeah. Two, instantly am surprised that a tiger is that cheap to buy. Yeah. You could pick one up for two grand. I'm like, fuck, that's, that's it? <laughs> Fuck. Well, what else did I learn? I learned that people that keep tigers are all fucked in the They're head. They're all fucked up, They man. are messed up 
people in the head, man, dude. Yeah, you got one guy who's who's a he's a gay. <laughs> he's, he's gay in Oklahoma, of all places. He's a gay country singing, tiger keeping, gun toting, like psychopath Running who to, is my new fucking hero. Trying to way. be a politician. Joe Exotic. Free Joe, Joe Exotic. Exotic. We need to free him. Trump's talked about it. We, well, I, he talked about freeing Joe We need Exotic, to get man. him out right away. We need to get him in a position of power. And we need to have tigers for everybody. I want my fucking stimulus tiger. Yeah, okay. I do. Yeah. yeah. I want a fucking tiger, and I want a fucking wolf, and I want a monkey of I any see, sort. Oh, you know, I had a friend who had a monkey yeah. when I was in high school. Right. Don't, don't get a monkey. Well, he had a spider monkey. That thing would shit in its hand and throw it at you. You'd be sitting there, and it would pee on you, man. Oh, hell no. Like, fuck that shit. Yeah. No, no, I no. No. The beatings will continue until morale improves. Ah, well, that's our current government right now. That's where, that's where the world's at right now. That is. That's right. I just want to say to our new handlers, all hail. All hail the new handlers. All hail. All hail. Okay, but, um, anyway. <clears throat> and Sucker, you're fine. Fuck. No, you're fine. You're fine. Fuck social media. <laughs> social. Fuck social media as we talk about, uh, you know, being on social media at this point. But anyway. <laughs> They all suck, by the way. We're fucking <laughs> doing this right much? now. Yeah, no shit. Mm. Hey, we're going all over the place. So, but you know, that's usually what we do here in the Vikings Life. We set the bar low and we take we uh, <laughs> fucking taper off from there. That's right. So. That's right. <laughs> I find when I set no expectations whatsoever, I put a post. When out. I don't achieve them, I feel really good. I put a post out like asking people, like, "What do you guys want us to talk about?" You did? Like one person like responded. Oh well, one yeah. You know, I'm like, dude, I got, responded too, but I was, I was got almost fans. seven fans. I mean, come no, on. I think we're up to nine now. You think so? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we'll we lost them. Digits. That, that's the dream. Yeah. That's the dream. We're, we're up over 100 followers on YouTube. I think those people just can see what train wreck we are, you know? <laughs> that's right. What the fuck are these assholes talking about? Yeah, <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> just we don't know. You know we, just but the thing out. is, the thing about us is that we're not scripted. We're not censored. No. And we're not trying to be anything but ourselves. Exactly. I mean, I see so much fucking, you know, biker type shit. Like, cause I'm like, like, I, I, hate, I don't watch network TV anymore. Like, I just, I don't know. It's not for a political reason. I just don't. It just seems stupid and corny and cheesy. You know, there's no laugh track in life. So when I watch a show that has a laugh track, I'm kind of like, nah, that's dumb. You know, or well, let's talk about biker type shit, right? You know. What, what's the most, I don't know, influential type biker show that has happened in the past, let's say, 10 fucking years? We all know it. Say it. Say it. Sons of Anarchy. Sons of fucking Anarchy, right? Now, don't get me wrong. Great fucking show, right? As far as, like, production goes, as far as, like, storyline goes. Oh, it, sure. It was, it was interesting. People, yeah, it kept people fucking interested, right? Mm -hmm. But... You, you, you can't deny the fact that it kind of painted, well, clubs in particularly, in a shitty light. That's the only way Hollywood likes to portray it. And that's the way Hollywood portrays it, right? I mean, if they ever have a documentary about bikers, it's always this whole, like, it's a it's a underbelly crime syndicate. You know, like, we're all doing this crazy shit. Maybe not us, but other clubs that are more well-known and scary, you know. But at the same fucking time, like... I just started really getting into like, like uh, independent type film, like well not film, but like independent type stuff, like YouTube, or some sort of deal like that, because, you know, it's like, it's reality at its finest, right? Mm -hmm. I love watching stuff where it's just this guy, and he's and he's doing a thing, and you know he's got to be passionate about it because he's not really making any fucking money, you know, like any YouTube star you know, air quote star is, is doing it for years. My keys is doing it for years before he makes a fucking dime. And right. if you're not going to do something for free, unless you fucking want to do right. it, right. Unless you fucking love it. Right. We're not making any fucking money off this. Although Perel should fucking give us some goddamn money. <laughs> Perel. Hello. Advertisement. Man. Fuck. A and W root beer. Miller Lite. And a lot Jameson. of weapons from BudK.com. Bud Smith and Wesson. Com. Come on. That's right. Smith and Wesson. We'll work for bullets. We <laughs> Actually, yeah, we will, actually. Mm. A lot of things we'll work for. True story based on actual events. But So what you're saying is, is that reality TV isn't real. Yeah, Lizard 
dick towing or whatever the fuck it's called. That's not real. <laughs> Lizard lick? Yeah. What about West Coast choppers? No, no, no. First of all, what about Orange County choppers? I was just going to get to Orange first County. First of all, we will not, we will not talk shit about Jesse James. No, I wasn't we talking will not shit talk about him. Jesse James is a hero and deserves all respect. Okay. Let's talk about uh, Orange County choppers. Then. <laughs> <laughs> so fuck the Tuttles. No, I'm just kidding. I got no beef. But no, no. I, I, it was entertainment. It was yeah. entertainment. And that's not even what I'm talking. Well, kind of, but I not know, really. I know. We don't, I look, don't stick to a script. Look, I, and the reason why I'm a fan of Jesse James, right? Jesse James doesn't typically bullshit. I, if he does, he does a really good fucking job of it because I can't tell, and I'm pretty good at fucking identifying bullshit when I see it. He actually makes the shit instead of buying it and strapping he it. He had a special where he basically went through a divorce, a marriage, and then another fucking divorce, and he put that out there. Not many people would do that, yeah. You know, because let's be honest, social media has taught us that we all try to paint our ourselves as these uh, amazing fucking people. Every time I go on social media, nobody's talking about all the fuck ups they do. Right. They talk about oh, well, having the you living my best life over here, eating fucking this exotic fucking food, and I did amazing things today. Nobody's like, yeah, I fucking woke up this morning, and I drank too much, and I shit my fucking brains out, <laughs> you know. It, it's, You've that's, all been there. well, yeah, we've all been there, you know, so, like, you know, when I talk about, like, this whole podcast, I wanted to, like, show what, like, a real biker-type person thought and was like, because you hardly get to see that. You know, we see things on TV, if, even if it's a documentary, it's spun to this narrative of this hardcore anti-society rebel that's out there kicking the world's ass and taking fucking names. I'm not saying those people aren't out there. I'm just saying that's not the fucking majority. No. That's not the norm. No, it isn't. And you know what? <laughs> Whatever works for somebody, that's cool. What works for them. Yeah. But I'm tired of the argument on on our Facebook page about what a real biker is. And that's not, and that's just it. I mean, what is a real biker? What you know, is fuck, a real biker? I, there's no fucking checklist. You know, no. it's not like, it's not like you would go to fucking Harley Davidson or the, you know, a dealership, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey, you want to buy a motorcycle? Yeah, we'll fill out this form yeah. and check off all the boxes of what you are. And then we can sell you a motorcycle. Right. Or once you buy a motorcycle, well, then here's all the stuff you're going to need to be a proper biker. You yeah. didn't, you didn't, no, 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 dude, you, so you missed that whole, that whole, like, hallway in the room? Yeah. Well, the guy goes, Psst, hey, yeah. over here, all right, you gotta sign off on the biker's code. Yeah. Mm. The bi I always hear about the biker's code. What is the biker's code? Because I don't, I haven't quite figured it out, and I'm a biker. I, I don't, I don't know what the fuck it is. From what just, I can don't tell. Don't be a dick. Be human. You right. know, be just real. Be yeah. Don't leave Solution. another biker on the side of the road. Well, I try not to leave anybody on the side of the fucking right. road, you know. Right. I mean, but in today's day and age, everybody's got a fucking cell phone. So yeah. is that even that much of an issue? But, yeah, I do stop if I see a bike. Hey, man, you cool? Yeah, all right, cool. And I'm on my fucking way. It's not like I'm going to fucking, oh, my God, did you break down? Well, take my bike, God damn it. You know? Yeah. Jesus yeah. fucking Christ. Man. Yeah. It's like. Some asshole from fucking the internet calling me brother all the fucking time. It's like, dude, uh, yeah. stop it. I don't want to talk about that because we had like a whole fucking episode <laughs> about that. Episode like two or three or whatever the fuck it was because well, it shit drives me nuts. What happens is, is, up, brother? is if people haven't figured out on our webpage is that a lot of our club brothers are on there. Yeah. And a lot of the people that know us in the community. Right. And so it's a lot of people, they don't realize that it might be a club brother responding to something that you and I put out right. on there. And so then we talk, we say, hey, brother, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. this, that, and the other thing. And then people that get this false sense of security. Yeah. I remember one time uh, we're getting on there, and I said that Dirty had said something to somebody, and I was like, fucking brother, I love you, man. That's fucking awesome. And some fucking douche nozzle gets on there. He's like, oh, I guess you two need a moment. Do you guys got to go hold hands with some fag faggot ass comment? I'm like, fuck you, man. Obviously, you know what the fuck you're talking about. Just a keyboard warrior. Another so, keyboard warrior. Yeah. I know, man. So, ain't, ain't nothing I'm going to say on there I wouldn't say to you your face. Yeah. So so this this whole thing spiraled because I made a post and I was asking about, you know, what people wanted us to talk about. Mm. And, like, one dude, Josh, who's a admin on our Facebook page. Bad props, Josh. Doing a good job, man. Fucking that guy's awesome. He's he fucking is. out there in California, and he's fucking living a goddamn dream. He's yeah. riding his Dyna. He's got T-bars. Right. He's a legacy, too. Dyna life. Oh, yeah. You know, 
those pictures of this fucking old lady. You see those pictures? I have, yeah. <laughs> fucking envious of Josh. Props, Josh. Props, props man. man. He's young. He's living that life. Right so on, I'm Josh. Like, man, I'm living through Josh. You know what I mean? Like I, <laughs> I, I live through Josh. But, you know, and he was like, tell stories about rides and tell stories about, you know, doing X, Y, Z while you're on a motorcycle. So I guess we had Patrick. He told a story about, what did you write your story about? That yeah, was about last year when we were riding through the snow and stuff. Oh, yeah, December yeah, 26. December 26. Tank, you got a story? Oh, I got so many fucking stories. <laughs> Tell a story. I got a story. Because <laughs> okay. I somewhat prepare, but I want. I, I don't want to step on doors. You know, I'm going to fucking show respect to my elders. Oh, shit. Let you go first. Wow. Age before that? beauty. Uh, and, uh, wow. <laughs> age before beauty. <laughs> I didn't get to fucking say shit now. Huh? I'm sorry. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Tell a story. I can tell you about the time I rode 750 miles an hour round trip for a shitty hamburger. Actually, it's cheeseburger. Proceed, sir. Moonshine, Illinois. Moonshine, Illinois. Moonshine, Illinois. It's uh, it's down south of Effingham. It's it's quite a hike, man. It's it's an intersection, is what it is. It's an old. It's like an old couple run it. Yep. And they, they do this. They used to do the Moonshine Run, which is a big lunch thing that they do. And people from all over the world get together in April and do this, do lunch. Now, it's a cool place because you walk in and they got, like, church pews. And, like, there's not even a match chair in the goddamn place. You walk all the way in the back. You put your order in. Mm -hmm. And then they write it for you down on a piece of paper. And then it's on the honor system. And you walk up in front. You tell them what you got and what you had and you pay for it. And then somebody brings it out to you. So, uh, but I mean, it's also like 11 miles up the gravel road. So anyway, I, I'm, I'm riding with some guys who were in uh, uh, southern southern Michigan, like Indiana, Gary, that whole Indiana, South Chicago, that whole area. So I leave, ride all the way fucking down there, get to their goddamn house. Next morning, it's 19 degrees when we leave to go to the snow. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, God. I mean, I, just, I remember just looking at my wife going, I don't know. You know. Right. So we get on the freaking the bikes and get ready to go. And I'm already freezing my nuts off. We haven't even stepped out of this garage yet. I've got like two pair of blue jeans on. I'm wearing a, you know, I've got, I'm not even not even geared for this motherfucker. We get on there to go to get gas. My glasses fog up so much. It's all riding in, in the cold, people. Mm -hmm. I can't even see. So now I got my glasses all cocked. And I'm looking at a piece about that big right there. It was just one of those journeys. That's how it started out. Using the force. Using the force, yeah. <laughs> Going, hope I don't fucking hit anything. Yeah. Okay, yeah, there there's the hash mark, there's the hash mark, there's the hash mark, you know, trying to get up. We've all been there. Yep. So suffice it to say we get down to Moonshine, Illinois, it's seventy degrees. We're peeling layers off as we get more along along the way. I just put a new windscreen on my bike. Mm -hmm. Uh we get into fucking I don't know, Martinsville. Martinsville, we go to an intersection. Guy in a freaking truck goes by, puts a rock up about that big. Shatters my fucking windshield right in the middle, right? I'm fucking pissed. I spent like four hundred something dollars on it. It was the first trip that I had taken with it. And I got this spider crack in there. Then we hit another fucking gravel road, and I'm like, "What the fuck, motherfuckers? Like, what are you doing, man?" <laughs> right. Jesus Christ! I mean, I lo uh, it was just one of those journeys, you know, when you go, "I'm doing this for a cheeseburger." <laughs> it's what people refer to as a character builder. A character builder. <laughs> Character building. So I had toyed with the idea at that point in time to say, fuck it, and just do another 250 miles and do it in iron butt. But then I realized I had documentary along the way, and they're kind of funny about that shit. Yeah. But uh, that's one of many stories, but we'll just we'll keep that one tame. Hey, man, you know, I got a story. And, uh, you know, what? when I saw that post, you know, talk about biking stories, like, all right, fine. We can talk about biking stories. I got a bunch of them. You know, I'm not special. You know, everybody's got biking stories. Ask me about Laconia in New Hampshire. You know, yeah, exactly. Everybody's got a million fucking stories. If you actually fucking ride a bike, you got a fucking story. Or you've got more than one or two or three or a million, you know. I mean, I would love to get the guy in our club that we should get on this fucking show to fucking tell us about some shit. Yeah. You know, but whatever. Anyways. So I got a story that I thought about sharing because it kind of, it plays into the whole why it's cool to be considered a biker, or why it's cool to even own a fucking motorcycle. So back in 2012, 
right? Uh, about this time, it was April. Um, I got jammed up, right? Basically, I was. Uh, we good to go? Yeah, we're fine. Okay. I was uh, jammed up, and uh, somebody accused me of doing some shit that I didn't fucking do, right? And I got the cops called on me, right? Luckily, I got a heads up. I knew the cops were fucking called. I knew they were fucking in force and they were looking for me. So I had like a, a few select friends that I trusted and I fucking hit them up and I was like, hey man, meet me at this fucking bar. I got to talk to you about some shit. And I was telling them what was going down. I was like, man, I need you to fucking, I was in a car at the time. I was like, dude, I need you to fucking take my car and fucking make sure that they don't tow it and shit because the last thing I need is my car to get fucking impounded and fucking they ransacked the shit. I need you to fucking get my bike and fucking move it because my bike was in a situation that it shouldn't have been in. You know, at the time I was riding a, a crotch rocket, you know. I know, I know. It's a C word, right? I was riding a rocket, you know, Honda Superhawk 996. Um, it's a pretty cool bike. Yeah, it is. They were, yeah. Crashing shit out of it. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> um, okay. Anyways. Like so, I, I, I fucking, you know, I had a dude move my bike for me because I couldn't fucking go and get it because I was sort of, you know, hiding out because there was like a fucking APB out on me and shit. And as soon as I left that fucking bar, I didn't get a block before I got lit up because there was a fucking cop who knew what I was driving, fucking lit me up, fucking, you know, went through the whole rigmarole of fucking getting questioned on the side of the road, knew, knowing I was going to fucking jail. So I didn't say shit. I was just like, yeah, whatever, man. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Blah, blah, blah. All right, well, I'm placing you under arrest for X, Y, Z, right? So he's like, at least he was semi-cool because he was like, is that your guy there in the car? And I'm like, yeah, that's my guy. Can you, you know, do you give him permission to take your car? Yeah, I give him permission to you take my car. Yeah, this is going to take a while. You're yeah. going to miss my epic story. Then. Keep oh, you know what? It's very important to me. I'm going to stay. You'll be fine. So, I give you some of my Jameson, but you might have the COVID, and, well, I don't want to get the COVID. Or I might have the COVID, and I don't want to give you the COVID, but I mean. Snort some Purell. I'll die with my brothers. I'll be fine. Anyway, so you're, bu you're busted. <laughs> so, anyway, you're so. You're busted by the cops. I'm busted by the cops. I'm in handcuffs. I'm going to fucking jail, right? And, uh, no. Fuck you. And, uh, so I'm going to fucking jail. And the way it works where we live. If you get arrested, I got arrested by a city cop, and you go to city jail, right? The the police station, right? And they book you, they take your mug shot, and then they start to question you, right? And anybody who's still listening to this fucking shit show, I'm going to tell you right now. If the cops are questioning you, <laughs> don't say fucking shit. I don't, don't give a fuck. Don't even say you're not going to say anything. Don't Just keep your fucking, fucking mouth shut. Don't say shit, right? Don't say a word. Because the cops are not your fucking friends. No. <laughs> They have a job to do, and that's bust bad guys. Mm -hmm. And if they've got you in handcuffs, and they're questioning you in their police station, you are a bad guy to them. Mm -hmm. So they are not your fucking friends. So I get questioned for, you know, a fucking hour or two. I don't fucking know. And then I get sent to county, right? They take you to county, and they fucking book you there, and they fingerprint you and document all your fucking tattoos, which takes a while. And then you got to fucking sit the night. Now, the way it typically works is... You get busted, say, I got busted on a fucking Sunday, and Monday morning rolls around. When they wake you up, you have your fucking breakfast, you know, you exchange typical, you know, you know, you know. SpongeBob for grits or whatever the fuck, you know, yeah, trading true. goes on, you know, because everybody trades for your fucking cake. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Kool Aid packets, man. Oh, dude. Man, you, that, that is currency inside that, of Or milk. Yeah. Milk. <laughs> That's you could the little cakes too for breakfast. You could buy a down. you could yeah. buy a boyfriend with milk. Anyways, <laughs> but you know we didn't get to that point. But um, well, you know. I got nothing. <laughs> First of all, this story I am trying I am trying so hard to leave certain things out of this fucking story because you asked me about a past I can't talk about. <laughs> I I well because this is an interesting story. Oh, well, and it's like all right, I thought about it for like the past day and how I'm going to tell this story and not. Either A, get myself in trouble, or B, not fucking involve other people where they were to get out, they would be mad at me and I'd have to fucking confront them because I'm trying to live my life this stress free way. But, um, anyways, so Monday morning, you know, you get up, you have your fucking shitty breakfast, and they have 
anybody who's like a new arrival who hasn't been arraigned or set for bail, whatever you want to call it, you're going to get called in to go see the public defender, right? And the way it is, they, all right, they, they call your fucking name and you fucking go to this other fucking room, which is like this concrete fucking room. You sit on this con or this fucking steel bench with like, I don't know, 10, 15, 20, however many fucking guys. Yeah, apparently when you're a criminal, you're not, you're not allowed creature comforts anymore. Right, and there's a yeah. fucking, there's steel benches and a <laughs> shitter just in case. And, yeah, you know. So, yeah, so everybody can know, see your business. Yeah, and there was a guy that had to take a shit that day, too. I was like, always. Really? Every time really I've been in, it's always some You couldn't fucking, fucking hold it for an hour. You had diarrhea. Get the fuck yeah. out of here. <laughs> anyway, but, um, so we go in this fucking room, and it's my turn to fucking talk. And it turns out I actually knew the guy. Like, we, we were, like, drinking buddies, so to speak, because we went to the same fucking bar. And he's like, oh, dude, what the fuck? And I'm like, yeah, and he's going over the list of charges. He's like, dude, did you? And I'm like, no, nah, man, it's bullshit. And he's like, oh, man, all right, well, we'll get you out of here. Okay, cool. So then, you know, as, after everybody goes and succeeds this fucking attorney, you fucking go back to the holding area, right? And I was accused of uh, violent crime, so I was in this fucking, this area for violent criminals, you know? And uh, it's like, I don't know, I'm get, well, you know, anybody who has They wouldn't want him violenting. Right. Yeah. Anybody who's ever been to fucking jail, they never fucking tell you the time, right? There's no clocks. No, and no. You can ask that fucking, you can ask that piece of shit fucking CEO what time it is a million fucking times, and it's going to fucking tell you none of your business or whatever the fuck it's going to tell you. Anyways, long story short, I'm guessing it's like going by past experiences, uh, they typically run through people's bail hearings or arraignments, whatever you want to call it, at like 11, right? So I sit there for about two hours, and they, all right, they start calling people's names. You're going to the uh, other area where they do the closed-circuit television to see a judge, mm -hmm. right? And they call everybody's name. Well, they didn't call my name. And I'm like, this is weird. So I fucking say to the guy, I'm like, hey, man, you didn't call my name. What's your name? I tell him my name. He goes, well, you're not on the list. Sit back down. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> right? So I go, and I sit back down. Right? And I'm a little pissed off because I'm like, wait a second, I'm supposed to get fucking bailed or, you know, something, right? And uh, the dudes that fucking went ahead of me, they're fucking grabbing their shit, you know, because you got to grab your fucking, you know, fucking mat or whatever you want to call it, you know, because, you, you know, because the set, all right, because you get like a, col a holding area, which is like a common area where it's got like the stationary picnic tables and then you got the individual cells where you're bunked up with somebody and it's like concrete. And then they give you a mat to lay on this concrete slab, right? <laughs> anyway, so they're all grabbing their shit to leave. And I'm like sitting there like, what the fuck? So I asked, the, hey, man, how come I'm not getting, oh, well, they're going to hold you till tomorrow. I've got another day, right? For whatever fucking reason. Because they don't fucking tell you shit. All right, fine. So now I'm super duper pissed off about the whole situation. And I'm going to sit another day. Another day show comes around, right? Uh, some new people come in. They go to do their thing with the district attorney. I'm thinking, all right, about whatever time, 10 o'clock or whenever Maury Povich, you know, Maury Povich or whatever the fuck thing is on TV. Boy, you're dating he, yourself there. But yeah. <laughs> is that not a thing anymore? More, I, she could be dead. I don't know. He's not the father. <laughs> anyway, but whenever that particular TV show is on fucking TV, that's when they call people to go to fucking their arraignment hearing or whatever the fuck it's called. And they call the next random dudes. Well, I'm not on the fucking list, right? I'm like, this is some bullshit. Because now I'm on day two. Why the fuck am I not getting bailed out? So I fucking asked the fucking, hey, man, you guys didn't call my fuck. Sit the fuck back down, man. Your name wasn't called. You're not on a fucking list. I'm going on 48 fucking hours, right? It turns out I'm talking. All right, because I was actually bunked up with a pretty cool dude. It was in there for some pretty serious shit. I'm like, man, this is some fucking bullshit. And he's like, man. They can hold you for 72 hours before they fucking arraign you. That's right. Damn. Motherfucker. All right. So I'm like, well, at least I know the next fucking day something's happening. Right? So next day shows up. Right? Same thing. New guys fucking jam out and fucking do their uh, meeting with the, you know, the public defender. I'm still sitting. Fucking. They come back. I'm like, all right. As soon as fucking Maury tells that guy he's not the fucking dad, they're going to fucking call everybody in. I'm going to get my day. I'm going to get the fuck out of here. Right? Because I'm now day three into this fucking bullshit. Day three rolls around. They call everybody. Not my name. Right? I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is fucked up. So I go to the CEO, and now I got a fucking attitude, right? 
I'm about to get myself fucking sent to fucking solitary because I'm pissed, right? I go to the fucking CO dude. I'm like, hey, man, this is day three. Where the fuck? What the fuck? And he's like, hey, sit your fucking ass back down. We'll get to you. All right, fine. Fuck it. So I go and I sit back down. About 20 minutes later, they call my fucking name. I go up to the fucking window. He's like, go grab your shit. All right, go grab my fucking shit. I'm thinking, all right, they fucking, they're going to send me to fucking either get bailed out or whatever. He's like, we're kicking you loose. What? Yeah, we're kicking you loose. Here's your court date. Show up at this time. All right, well, what's my bail? No bail. Here's your fucking time. You're kicked loose. That's it. That's all they fucking told me, right? Three days, huh? Three fucking days. Here's yeah. a court date. Make sure you're there. What the fuck, <laughs> right? So, okay, first of all, when I got busted, when I got popped, I left my cell phone in my car because I didn't want to, I didn't want it to get fucking, you know, in their hands and have them go through it or whatever, you know, whatever conspiracy I thought right. they were going to fucking do. So I had no cell phone. I had like $4 to my fucking name. And our, our county jail is like kind of in the middle of fucking nowhere. And they give you a phone card, which for whatever reason wasn't activated for me. So I couldn't even call anybody in these fucking three days, right? And I kept bitching, hey man, my phone card doesn't work. We'll fucking, we'll fix it. Don't worry about it. Never fucking fixed it, right? Just, just shitting all over my <laughs> constitutional rights. So I get out and I'm trying to fucking think to myself, all right, how am I going to get somebody to pick me up? Right? It's in the middle of the fucking day on a Wednesday. Everybody I know is either fucking working or whatever. I've got no way to communicate with them. It's 2012 and fucking pay phones aren't a thing anymore. <laughs> right? So where our jail is, Kitty Corner is a gas station, right? And I had to go buy a pack of smokes because, you know, I smoked at the time. And they, when they arrest you, they take your smokes and throw them the fuck away because apparently you're not allowed to be a smoker anymore. So I went and got a pack of cigarettes, and I asked the fucking gas station attendant, hey, man, can I use your phone? No, no, we don't let fucking people out of jail fucking use cell phones. And all that. Ah, fuck it. So I am now hiking five fucking miles back into town on foot, trying to walk to a buddy's work, where I think he's working, to see if I can borrow his cell phone, because I want to get hold of my other buddy that's got my car and my other buddy that's got my fucking motorcycle, right? So I walk to dude's work. Turns out dude's not there, right? It's his day off. I'm like talking to his coworker, man, let me use your phone. I start telling him the fucking, no, go ahead, I'll tell you later. <laughs> so I fucking get to the fucking dude's work, and I fucking give him a call. He's like, oh, it's my day off. All right, cool, whatever. He comes, he picks me up. I get my car. Then I get my bike. And I'm like telling him the story, and I'm frustrated. And I'm like, man, I'm going to fucking get on this fucking motorcycle, and I'm going to spend the next fucking 12 hours getting gooned up and fucking just being free. So I spent three days eating shit fucking food, almost getting into fucking fights with people that were pissing me the fuck off for the pure and simple fact that they were breathing to my fucking area. I just need to fucking just unload, you know, because I'm fucking wound, you know, I'm fucking tight as a rubber band. He's like, oh, man, he rode too. So he's like, hey, man, I'll go with you. So, you know, it's like, I don't know, this is all taking place in midday. We meet up, it's like 3.30 in the afternoon, you know, I'm on my Honda Superhawk 996, and he's on his TL1000 Suzuki, and he's like, where do you want to go? I'm like, east, you know, it's just like 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we're going to go east, because I don't want my, I don't want the fucking sun in my eyes, you know, I don't want to go west, I want to go east, no destination in mind, right, we're going to ride until we're thirsty, we're going to stop at a fucking bar, we're going to get fucking buzzed up, and then we're going to go ride to the next fucking barn, right? So we jam out. We go about, I don't know, 100-ish miles to a bar. Well, the bar I happened to hit up was a bar that turns out an ex-girlfriend of mine is a bartender at, who just so happened to be fucking working that day, right? You know, and she, I'm like, oh, shit, you know, <laughs> like, hey, what's up? You know, and I mean, I kind of knew she worked there, and that's kind of, it wasn't, it wasn't so much that I went there because of her. It was just so much that it was, a, it was a destination I had in my mind because I knew this bar existed in this general direction. And I had to have a fucking, you know what I mean? I just, I just wanted to have a destination in my mind. Like, okay, well, at the very least, we're going to stop here, you know? And I knew she kind of worked there, but I, I didn't know. It was like 
you know, a handful of years after. He's rambling. Mm -hmm. Ah, fucking, I don't care. So what? <laughs> There's no fucking time limit, you know? Sorry about that, man. Was, you get what you pay for. Anyways. Sahara over here. Shit, I need something to drink. <laughs> so do I. You realize. So we stop at this bar. <laughs> we stop at this bar. And she's working. And i like, oh, hey, what's up? We catch up a little bit. And she's like, uh. You know what are you guys doing out here and i kind of tell her the story you know i leave some shit out and i'm like you know i was fucking locked up for three days and you know i just got out and i'm like i just want to blow off steam i want to clear my fucking head i want to fucking just chill you know she's like oh i can understand it she's like well i'm done in 20 fucking minutes if you guys want to hang out i'll go with you and i'm like cool so me and my homeboy, we sit around, we drink a couple. Yeah, cool. And, you know, you gotta play it cool, man. You, just, you know, be cool. Cool. Anyway, so you know, you can't show me that. Yeah. Anyway, so, <sighs> fuck. Anyway, so <laughs> we hang out. She jumps on the back, and it's like five thirty, six o'clock, right? Dude, we fucking hit every fucking bar in like a, I don't know, eighty hundred mile fucking radius. Like, we closed out the fucking bar at 2 in the morning. We just do the A run or what? I am editing this story. Let's put it that way. <laughs> for, for for the sake of my marriage, I'm editing this. <laughs> Say she loves you a lot. I do. This was before I met you. Yeah, way before. Before I met you. But, um, so, yeah. Anyways, so me and my fucking homeboy fucking party it up with my ex. And, uh... I drop her off at home. It's like 2.30 in the morning at this time. Now, it's April in Wisconsin. When we set off, it was 60-ish degrees, right? Mm -hmm. Not bad. Mm -hmm. 2.30 in the morning, it is now upper 30-ish degrees. <laughs> yep. We are 100 plus miles from fucking home, right? And we're jamming down the fucking back roads because we've had a couple cocktails, right? <laughs> you know? And we stop at this gas station like a halfway point. We got the G.I. Joe Kung Fu grip because our fucking hands are so frozen from gripping the goddamn fucking handlebars. You know, we're like, eh, you know, oh, yeah. we got the fucking, you know, the constant shiver. And we're fucking drinking coffee at like 2 in the fucking morning trying to put anything warm in us. Uh -huh. And my fucking dude says to me, he goes, man, you know, I'm fucking freezing my ass off. Because you know how guys are. You know, we're never going to admit right away that we're cold. Oh, and we're no, dying. we're all fine. Right. How are you? I'm, I'm fine, man. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. Fingers are turning black. I'm fine. I'm fine. Anyway, so I says, man, here's... I don't do the deal the other Yeah. <laughs> I can fucking live for it. But um, anyways, I says, man, we got two choices. We can continue down this back road way, and it's probably going to take us an extra 15 minutes to get home. Or... Or... We can jump on that fucking interstate. Go 105. Go, <laughs> yeah. Go felony level speeds. Be home sooner, but be colder. My dude said the smartest thing or the most cleverest thing I've ever heard. He goes, it's the same cold at 65 as it is at 120. I'm like, fair enough. Man, we jumped on that fucking interstate and just grabbed gears. And we were probably a good 45 minutes away from home. We got home in like. Well, we got to Janesville in like 20 fucking minutes. Yeah. Like 20 minutes. Going, going, going 100 has a way of, of doing uh -huh. you're making things real, real oh. short. Oh, yeah. Just, <laughs> you know? And the reason I tell that story is because when I think back on it, like, like it was super shitty being stuck in jail. Like, it sucked, you know? when You know, it's not the first time. It's not probably won't be the last but you know, <laughs> when you're sitting, you know, when you're you're on like vacation. It, yeah, well, and well that, was, yeah. And that was a Thursday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you're sitting and you're locked up, and every freedom you have is gone, right? Mm -hmm. All you think about is not being there. Yeah. Right. You think about everything else. Oh, within ten minutes of that door shut, you're you're thinking of ways to escape. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You, know, you don't have a fucking a moment's fucking peace. No. You know, there's always some bail of fucking making sure you're not, you know, making toilet wine. Or... It's like two places you'll never get to sleep. Hospital and jail. You'll never yeah. get to sleep. Yeah. No, I got a story about that too, but that's for another <laughs> podcast. But, you know, it's like you're sitting in there and all you think about is what the fuck you're going to do once you get out. And the only thing I can think about doing is getting on my fucking motorcycle and just jamming out. A free man. You know? Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I could think about. That's the only thing that kept me from fucking punching a motherfucker in the face for being a dick. You know what I mean? 
I was like, man, I can't do anything that's going to keep me in here any longer. I got to keep yeah. my fucking cool. Because you know them motherfuckers. Hard, dude. They test you. Yeah, they do. I, I can't say the racial slur I want to say right now, but them <laughs> motherfuckers test you. Oh, on yeah. purpose. And it's like, fuck you, right? And I had, you know, I had some moments, but at the same time, I, you know, it's just like, fuck you. I just walked away. You got to play crazy white boy. Uh, fuck. Anyway, so. Throw your food on them. They love it. You're the minority in that situation. Yeah, but say, who the fuck are you? Right. And then you attack the biggest one. Dude, yeah. my celly was fucking cool as shit. You know, we fucking got along, you know, because he kind of, you know, he was an older dude. Well, not older, you know, he's probably in his, you know, late 30s. That age thing yeah. yeah. Well, you know, fuck you. It's important. <laughs> well, he was in his late 30s. So when all the punk fucking 21 year olds were fucking with me, he was kind of like, mm. like, hey, man, leave that alone. You know, and they had like the little fucking MMA matches and the fucking, anyways, and they had like, okay, so you have like the common area, so when it's like everybody's out, you have the, everybody's out, mm -hmm. but then you have like the shit that goes on in the cells. Mm -hmm. yeah. like anyways, some, some tango and cash shit, man. Yeah. Wow. Good movie <laughs> reference, by the way. Yeah, I know. I know. That's an excellent movie. I, it is a good movie. I, no, like, I, mean, I love Tango and yeah. Cash. Kurt Douglas and fucking Sylvester Stallone. You can't go wrong with You Kurt can't go Douglas. wrong. No. They had monster trucks in that movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah, strippers. Good fucking movie. Tango and Cash. Sister. I loved it. Google it. Google that shit. That's and then right. Google Big Trouble in Little China. Love that movie. And then Google fucking Cobra. Cobra. So that's what he has. He has, he has the bitchiness car in Cobra. He does that Merc. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, that thing. And is... what's 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 he leave on? Like the Cobra gets all fucked up, mm -hmm. and then he drives like a fucking like a shitty Ford pickup truck. Yeah. Right. And then he has a big shootout. He has the fucking bad guys in that fucking industrial like fucking setting, you know, because in the eighties everybody fought in industrial fucking of settings. Of course. Right. <laughs> and then at the end of the fucking day, he's got that fucking crazy bitch from the fucking fourth Rocky on the back of what? A Harley, goddamn mm -hmm. it. The hero rides off on a Harley. fucking mm -hmm. Harley, a fucking soft tail. And that's why I ride motorcycles, by the way, because. You know, the hero always rode off in a fucking Harley, or the baddest motherfucker in the world rode off in a Harley, so I ride a Harley now because I want to be the baddest motherfucker in the world. It's funny, you know, you just sit on a Harley Davidson. Think about any, late, like in the past 10 years, any goddamn article you see, a uh, person was involved in a motorcycle accident. He was on a 2006 Harley David Ultra Limited Classic, not wearing a helmet. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck does it matter what kind of motorcycle was he on when yep. he hit the fucking right. bridge abutment? You know? Well, that's because Goldwing, guys, got all the gear on. I bet you Goldwing's hit a bridge of button and you died. No, too. no, no. Goldwing guys are the perfect people. Oh. They have all the gear all the time. You know, they got their pocket protectors. They got their fucking two-way radios so they're having their wife can have a conversation going down the road because every guy wants to have a conversation with his wife in the back when they're going on their own motorcycle, don't you know? You know the uh, gas tank on the Goldwing isn't, isn't even where you think it is? Like no, it's it, yeah, it, it's down yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Like that's like a piece of plastic that yeah. goes over the. Yeah, they just want it to look like a. To look like a, it is. It's not First a of all, this motorcycle. podcast will always bash on Goldwing guys because fuck those guys. That's. <laughs> I mean, it's all love. I mean, I really don't have a beef, but at the same time, we just don't. Dirty. We don't understand Goldwing. Sorry. It's the thing because they because they act so superior. They do. You yeah. Know, oh, my bike's the best bike because. It's a gold. It doesn't break down, and it gets through gas mileage. Shut the fuck. They up. had to make it so it break down because if you got to, if you have to like change one small little thing, you have to pull the whole motorcycle yeah. apart. Now, granted, that opposing the boxer motor is a pretty good motor, it's but a, I mean, yeah. just to get into it, you have to take off like seven hundred and fifty pieces of plastic. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, if, if you want to talk about specs, yes, a Goldwing is a good bike, and it makes sense, and I get it. But let's be honest: if you ride a gold a Goldwing, you're a Fucking nerd. <laughs> you are a fucking nerd. Now, the gentleman that rides a gold wing on a certain motorcycle club in Western Massachusetts that we're friends with, no offense, brother. <laughs> you're but you, you ride a gold wing. You ride a gold wing. You, you know what you ride. Wing. You know what you ride. Yeah. I just never understood why it mattered. What kind of motorcycle he rode when he, when he died, you know? No, I mean, I get it. I mean, you know, everybody gets... good credit. Yeah. It, that's another thing. <laughs> that's something very expensive as fuck. Yeah, all everybody bitches. Harleys are too expensive. Do you hear price of Goldwing? Price of BMW. Mm -hmm. Oh, jeez. Yeah, no shit. Fuck. Hey. Price of Arch motorcycle from Keanu Reeves. First of all, those are amazing motorcycles. <laughs> they are. I know. They got that SNS 144 motor on them. Ever since I saw John Wick, oh, like, well. I want to be Keanu Reeves. Oh, well. <laughs> Let's John look at his lifestyle. One single guy in Hollywood, a beautiful man to boot. No homo, by the way. No homo. But a beautiful man, single. Has a motorcycle company, rides motorcycles, movie star. He's 
I mean, let's assume the fact that he's uber rich. He's a hell of a guy from what I understand, too. And he's like the nicest motherfucker on the planet. Everybody else is going hashtag me too and getting me too like a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Not Keanu him. Reeves? Not a damn thing. No, I mean, it's not uh, a damn thing. I read a couple stories of different times people like on the movie, like this, those little minion workers, mm -hmm. weren't getting paid enough. And like he gave them all a raise, like out of his own pocket. Like, yeah. Pay for it. You know what yeah, I mean? That's yeah. the type of guy he is. And, I mean, I, I have not ridden. The fucking arch motorcycles, they're like, you know, 80000 fucking dollars. And I don't know anybody with an $80,000 fucking dollar. But, Keanu, bike. if you happen to be listening to this, we would love to be able to test those motorcycles. I out. will fucking. You have actual you. bikers here who love to ride. I was riding since we were in single digits. Fucking love to ride an arch. I would love to. Because they're, I mean, what is it? It's like an S&S, &S, like 124, It's a 144. 144. 140. 140, yeah. yeah. I know it's like stupid big. Yeah. It's a Harley-based engine. It is, it is. You know, it's like, I think it's based off a of twin cam. Yes, it is. Yep. But at the same time, the chassis, I mean, fuck, from what I hear, those bikes handle just amazing. That's what I hear. It's like well. a rider's bike. I, yeah, I know. I just yeah. can't afford one. And that's, well, that's <laughs> cool, you know. <laughs> Me neither. Because I could buy two houses for yeah, one of those. We, <laughs> we talked about fucking, you know, OCC, right? Mm hmm And let's be honest. Most of us watch that fucking show, American Chopper, right? Let's be honest. Those fucking motorcycles are show bikes. You're not going to want to ride that thing. Oh God, no! Anywhere, you know, substantial. You know, it's a it's a bar hopper at best. At best, you'd it's get a, a, you'd break your back going bar to bar on some of them. It's rides. a tavern assault vehicle. Yeah, yeah. But you look at a bike like well, Jesse James made fucking bikes you could actually ride, but at the same time, let's be realistic. None of us over the age of fucking thirty. Are going to be able to ride a rigid for any you know amount of time, you know what I mean? That thing's going to kick your ass. Mm -hmm. You know, he made that one bike for one of those biker build-off shows, and he like he like made the the motor and the frame were like all one unit. Yeah, yeah. that would rattle you to fucking death exactly. Think about that. You know? yeah. Boy, you better make sure you don't have to go to the bathroom when you get on that motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. Talk about a bladder buster. Jesus <laughs> Christ, man! All those bikes are fucking cool as shit. I mean, they look cool. They yeah. fucking sound cool. I mean, it's cool. You know, you're going to get fucking pussy for days if you fucking ride one. <laughs> but at the same fucking time, practically speaking, mm -hmm. you're not going to want to fucking cross state lines on one of them cocksuckers. And oh. if you if you can, you're badass. You're, you're hardcore. I can't compete. But the average dude is not going to be able to ride one of them motherfuckers <laughs> cross state lines, right? But, like, the Keanu Reeves bike with suspension, with, let's be honest, real high-tuned fucking suspension with ergonomics that makes sense, you can ride across state well, lines. because they build those for the individual rider. Exactly. Yeah. You can ride them across state lines. You can fucking drag a knee if you want to go hardcore. Mm -hmm. And it's going to fucking last because it's the best of the best, right? Mm -hmm. They take the best of the best parts, and they put it all together. They put their own spin on it, and you get an arch motorcycle. Yeah. You know, that's why they're eighty thousand fucking dollars. Why right they're eighty? There, yeah. You know, but I, I think the base price is only like sixty-five or sixty-six. I don't you know. even know. It, it's out of my price range. Yeah, you know right, I mean? it's, like, it's out of my price range. I just don't even fucking consider it. <laughs> and there's like a fucking like year or two fucking waiting list to even get one. Maybe we'll get a biker stimulus package. You know, from all the bikers that are able to get out right now. And Mike Pence. Hey, Pence rides. He's got a cut. You know, he rides. Maybe, maybe the government will take pity on him. Vest. I, I know, but they all called it a cut in, yeah. in the news the other day. I was just slapping my ass off. And, yeah. Yeah, and it was like a police department thing on there. But, hey, he rides. Is that what it said, Pence? It's a Pence. I thought it said yeah, police. He put his name on his vest. I, whatever, man. I knew a young kid who started riding. He decided he wanted to get in with the, the A bait people, you know, so he buys himself a little Honda Magna 500. Yeah. You know, and a, a piece of shit bike. You got to start somewhere. He you know, started on a fucking right. Nighthawk or a yeah, Hawk on the Hawk. with a rattle, Honda Hawk, you know, yeah. rattle can paint job in matte black, and then he goes out and he buys himself this vest, and then he he like gets this little patch called the Dude, and then puts that on there, <laughs> like calls himself the Dude, the Dude, <laughs> the Dude, the Dude abides. And uh, so he starts showing up with some AVA shit, you know, and hanging out with the bikers and whatnot. And so we invite him, we invite him on over to a all night AVA, you know, uh, party, and. Uh, then suddenly he's standing there and fucking it was a best butt contest and then it was best underwear contest. The next thing you know, the girls got the drawers off and it was 
best beaver contest. Skin to win. Skin to win, baby. And he was over there. Fucking his ears couldn't have been more red, man. He was so embarrassed. <laughs> Never saw that motherfucker again. <laughs> yeah, no. Gone. <laughs> you know, the whole point of my fucking long, epic story. There was a point. There was a point. I know there, I know there was a point. I just had to say it. For emphasis. Man, I don't know who's driving this fucking shit show. Nobody is. <laughs> it's not me. You got the brass knuckles. I'm listening to you. Yeah. But the whole point of my story is I started out that weekend. It was kind of shitty. It got super shitty. And then it got real shitty. And then it kind of get it kind of got better. And if it wasn't for the fact that I had good friends and a fucking motorcycle, life would have sucked balls. Yeah. And that's what this whole thing's about. You know what I mean? The biker's lifestyle is a motorcycle and good friends. Because sure, if I didn't have a bike and I just had good friends, you know, we could have sat around a fucking shop. Or we could have sat around a bar and just hung out and bitched and moaned and drank and, oh, you'll be okay. You know, we could have done all that. Yeah. Okay, fine. You know, that's how normal people are, right? I ain't normal. You're not normal. He's no. normal. Or, or you could just have a bike, right? And you get out and you're fucking free as a bird. So you jump on your bike and you're all by yourself. And don't get me wrong, I like to ride by myself sometimes too. And riding by yourself isn't a bad deal sometimes or at all. You know, that's your gig, that's your gig, you know, whatever gets your fucking rocks off. And you could buzz around and you could fucking hit a bar too and you can just fucking get into that meditation zone fucking zen type state where you're fucking in the wind and you're, oh, my mind is empty, you know, you're a guru, you know. <laughs> you could do that and that's fine. That's but why there's you... no stereo on my bike. Huh? That's why I don't have a stereo on my bike. I don't have a stereo on my None of us do. No. No. None of us do. No nope. stereos here. No. I don't think I'll ever put one on there. Nope. Soft tail, road king, road king. Fuck fairings. Anyways, <laughs> I do envy a fucking radio, though. I do envy a radio sometimes. Yeah. I'll be riding next to a fucking brother or whatever, and he's got his fucking tunes going, and I'm like, what's he listening to? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're behind one, one, but it's like death metal, you know? It's like, whoa, whoa, a little too hardcore for me. Like, yeah. Let me go over here. Okay. Classic rock. Cool. All yeah. right. Uh, now, All right. I'm, now I'm in the breeze. <laughs> like, what? Go for rap. What are you doing, man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's yeah it's true it's, that's true <laughs> i'm either listening to fucking cradle of filth steppenwolf or like fucking big smoke yeah you know? yeah that's so true <laughs> or i'm listening to <sighs> anyways well the thing is man what most of the people that made their way into the clubs are just they're, they're, we're all like that well it's you know you know it's our medicine man all right, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm still getting further away from the point I was trying to make, well, but I'm gonna, gonna say this real soon. quick. Well, I'm trying, but you know, um, I'm gonna say this. I, I see all the fucking time, independents, guys that aren't in motorcycle clubs. Which, hey, that's cool. In that's no cool. way, shape, or form, am I saying that you have to be in a motorcycle that's club right. to be considered a biker? That's I am right. not saying nope, that. Nope, not at all. Not at all. But if you're not in a motorcycle club. And you start shitting on motorcycle clubs, saying, "Well, I I want to be my own self. Nobody gonna tell me what to do. Nobody's gonna tell me what to do. I'm, I'm my own man. Person. Yeah. Man, shut the fuck up. That's the wrong attitude to have. It is the wrong attitude to have. First of all, if somebody's telling you what to do, as far as motorcycling goes, chances are you're doing it fucking wrong. Yeah, yeah. Dude. There's a real mentorship going. Nobody's on told me what to fucking do in a long fucking time, because I do what I have to fucking do. I step up when I have to step up. I step back when I have to step back. And you figure it the fuck out. You figure you? it the fuck out. That's right? right. This shit isn't hard. No. Be a fucking man. Be your fucking self. That's mm -hmm. right. Say what you mean. Mean what you say. Yeah. Number say two, they say, well, I'm an individual. First of all, a motorcycle club, if it's anything, is a bunch of individuals being part of something. As a unit. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I have been shit. No, I've never seen anybody get changed. The motorcycle club has changed them or made them change to be something different. Exactly. Yeah. If you were an asshole when you started to join, Pretty you're going to be an asshole when you join. Yeah. If you're fucking a pussy when you started, you're probably going to be a pussy when you're fucking yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, everything is individualized. Well, you can well, see it in motors, in our bikes. You yeah. know, I might ride a Road King with 150 fucking horsepower 
and eight hangers and whatever. And another brother's riding a bone stock fucking ultra classic or another brother's riding a fucking soft tail with fucking flames. I mean, it's, we're all individuals. And I'm, I mean, I'm that old school guy. I know you were old school. But I think I'm going to bump it up to a 96. I like that one. I don't see why you should. I don't have money. We'll work on it. They always make more of it. That, oh, Sorry. that's true. I'll just Every print day. it. We'll just you, print can, it. you can always make more money, but you can't make more time. Mm. I'm running out of that Very nicely said. Yeah, nicely said. Fucking, hey, man. Fucking old boy that I work with. Say <laughs> Fucking, I live my life by that. But anyways, um, my point I was getting at is like, you can have a bite and no friends. You can have friends and no bite. But you combine the two, right? You combine fucking riding a motorcycle with people you consider a brother that are super fucking close, that you don't have any blood ties to, but you would fucking die for them in a heartbeat, right? You combine those two things. I don't care how fucked up your life is at that point in time. It will instantly be better. Yeah, I agree. Instant. Absolutely. And I think back on that. Like, it was like, like, shh. Like a super fucking shitty time of my life and a super fucking high point of my life, all in the same like 72 <laughs> hours. You know what I mean? Like it's a super fond memory and it's a super shitty memory. That's how it works. Man. You know what I mean? It could have been 48 hours, but that fucking day left. That's where call your name. Well, there's. Okay, so I'm going to finish that story. I'm going to finish that story. So, long story short, they fucking kicked me loose. And they fucking said, just be on this court date. All right, so for like three fucking weeks, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Did they fucking track some old shit down? I'm like trying to think of all the all the things that they could get me on. You know what I mean? Like, what, did they find out about, you know, because nobody would talk to me. You know what I mean? Like, I would call the fucking DA like, hey, uh, I got this court date. I don't even know what I'm charged with. They were like, just be at that court date. I'm like, okay. And I hit my fucking boy up, and he's a public defender. I'm like, hey, man, what the fuck's going on? And he's like, I don't know. I have no fucking information. Yeah, and you don't want to get my cousin Vinny, you know, thinking you're admitted to stealing a can of tuna fish, but yeah. it's murder, you know? Right? You kind of want to know what you're being Coffee charged with. Coffee tracks in the rear end. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's like fucking, uh, you know, I had no fucking information. I'm going into this court date blind. Like, I have no idea what's going to happen, wow. right? No idea. None whatsoever. Nobody knew. Nobody would tell me shit. So the day comes, you know, I wake up early, I put on my best fucking button up shirt and, you know, my cleanest blue jeans and I go to fucking court, right? And, you know, I'm sitting there and but all rise, you know, and fucking judge comes <laughs> in and we all sit back down because, you know, apparently we're still doing that these days, you know. Yes, Supreme Lord, what do you have to bestow upon me? Anyways, but um, in that room, there's Supreme Lord. Man. He, mm -hmm. you know, he he starts talking. He says, "All right, the following people, when I call your name, please stand up." And he runs through names, and mine is one of those names, right? He, you are being dismissed. The state is not uh, pursuing charges on you at this time, but reserves the right to pursue charges at a later date. That's called continued without a finding. Exactly. Yeah. So essentially, I had several of those. <laughs> <laughs> they arrested me. Not me. Yeah, I just went to jail. No, <laughs> uh, I've done that too. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, it sounds like bullshit, man. It, it's, and you know what? It sounds, I got arrested. It sounds fucking typical. It's I got funny. arrested. I hate to say that. Mm -hmm. I got locked up, put in a fucking cage for 72 fucking hours. For nothing. And they didn't even have enough evidence to fucking charge me. And they wonder why bikers hate cops. Yeah. They wonder why. The public has a fucking piss poor opinion about police. Right? I don't hate cops. I just feel a lot better when they're not around. <laughs> Agreed. I don't. I understand. Like I said before, I understand they got a fucking job, yep. and I understand that there's a portion of law enforcement that got into it to protect the weak, and that's respectable, right? But it has to be said, there's a portion that got into it to be fucking bullies. And to be dicks. Agree, and just to shit on people because yeah. they get their fucking rocks off by them. Yeah. Well, that's true. You know? No, I do. I've, I've, I've met them. And I've been arrested by them. Oh, yeah. And I understand there's judges that fucking get off on just fucking they're ruining people's fucking lives just so they feel like a big man. Like, oh, I just fucked that dude's whole life. Oh, fuck you. Yeah. I know they're, mm. those guys are out there. And I know there's also guys out there that, you know, they... They believe in the law, they believe in America, they believe in the Constitution, and they just believe in having a society that doesn't eat itself, right? 
there's those people too, right? But, you know, at the end of the fucking day, I didn't get charged with what I got fucking arrested for, I guess. And, you know, to this day, they never pursued charges, so I'm going to assume that I'm free and fucking There's got to be a statute of limitation on <laughs> that motherfucker again. Uh, yeah, it should be up by you now. You didn't, yeah. you didn't kill anybody, so. No. No, I didn't kill anybody, but. That one never goes away. But I don't, I don't. All yeah. the other ones do. Mm -hmm. Well, it was, you know, it's all felony shit they arrested me for. Yeah, yeah. But Been at there. the same time, they didn't, yeah. <laughs> at the same time, I didn't get fucking officially charged and all yeah, that bullshit. Yeah. But, you know, that's my whole point. It's like, you can be at the lowest point in your life. And insert motorcycle, insert good friend. And you're instantly at one of the highest points in your life, you know. Yeah. Right, man, yeah. we had so much fun that night, dude. Like, I believe you. We fucking put hundreds of miles. Well, not well, yeah, a couple hundred miles on. We got fucking. That's hundreds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mathematically speaking, it's hundreds. But um, you know, we put miles on. We got fucking. We got drunk at multiple fucking bars, allegedly drunk. Um. We, <laughs> It is what it is. But, you know, we got fucking, we got a, we caught a buzz. We fucking, you know, jammed the jukebox full of fucking obnoxious music <laughs> on a Wednesday night when fucking old timers were trying to drink their tappers, Just you know. all over the board, too. Oh, oh dude, it was it'd like. It would be rock, and then it would be like Willie Nelson. Dude, I played, like, exactly. Rock again, it'd be like, like rap. It'd like, be like, <laughs> Ramstein, Willie Nelson, Local H, fucking Merle Hanger, fucking. <laughs> Uh, two live crew. I mean, it would just be yeah, all over just the all map, over dude. The board, Fuck right? yeah, man. <laughs> Shooting pool, fucking yeah. just carrying on. Nobody gives no a shit. Iggy, no Iggy Pop. Come Get on, to BJ man. in the parking lot. But, you know, fuck you. Allegedly, I mean, allegedly. Allegedly, yeah. It was before I met Might him. as well put some murder junkies in there, too. Before the white. But, um, you know, long story <laughs> short, you know, it's like, Ray. you know, you're living your best life and you're living your shitty life all in the same week. And the motorcycle is almost like the fucking equalizer, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, because riding a motorcycle is for 100% enjoyment, you know? Like, nobody needs to ride a motorcycle. You can get around just I fine. I think it's different. <laughs> <laughs> so would I. But I'm just I saying. I know what you're saying, man. I'm practically saying, speaking, if they practically don't. Practically speaking, you know, your average asshole doesn't need a motorcycle to get around. It's like my peace. Like when I get on my bike, it's it's like a whole other world. Yeah, I'm just, man. You know, yeah. everything else disappears. I'm just All free. Disappears, man. And it takes you know. a different type of human, a different type of human to fucking understand. Right. Well, unless you've done it, there's no way I could explain it to somebody who hasn't. Well, that's right. what I mean. Like, yeah. like if you look, if I explain, like, say an alien came down, because by the way, the government just established yeah. that we have aliens in our fucking planet. One because, week ago, conspiracy theorists today. The yeah, fucking reality, man. <laughs> yeah, the Pentagon. The no yeah. shit, right? There might be aliens. Yeah. But, <laughs> so you've been lying all this time. Great. It gives uh, me a warm fuzzy uh, right now. Uh, uh, oh, you mean there's other things in the world besides us? Oh, cool. What's Anyways. <laughs> if I ain't lying to you, I ain't telling the truth to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but no, my point is, like, he's going to make a point. Yeah. That was a good look. I'm sorry, brother. Go ahead, man. I apologize. I have a microphone, and you will listen to everything I have to say. <laughs> All hail dirty. All hail dirty. That's a little wedding singer action for you. But it's like you have to be a particular type person to even ride a motorcycle. Because on paper, they're dangerous as fuck. Mm -hmm. Right? You are out there. Mm -hmm. Like, I implore anybody that rides a motorcycle to be at the ready. You know, because you never know. You, oh, yeah. Because unlike any other mode of transportation, you're you're out there in the in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Your whole body is exposed. Your there's whole no being, protection. there's no protection. Yeah, you're everybody, vulnerable, man. Yeah. Everybody knows if you're fat or fucking skinny or mm -hmm. slow or old. Everybody knows it, right? You can hide in a tinted window car, right? Yeah. You can hide in a fucking truck. But you can't hide on a fucking motorcycle. No, nah, you're kind of out there. Wow, your old shit yeah, out there for yeah. everybody to see. You man. are. You it's are. who you are. You know, they they see they see you. Yeah, they see yeah. you on a machine. That's mm -hmm. right. Right. You are vulnerable mm -hmm. to weather, to fucking people's fucking mood. If some asshole's having a super bad day and he's pissed off because you fucking zoom past him too fast, he could fucking barely touch his fucking bumper on your rear tire and end your fucking life. Yeah, that's true. Right? So I, t I, man, I try to, I 
I try to tell people, man, just be ready. You know, yeah. have protection. Have a firearm, a knife, a tourniquet, a fucking first aid kit, because you never fucking know. Because yeah. you're the wild fucking west, wherever the fuck you are. Yeah. You are the last fucking cowboy. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And it takes a special human being to assume all those fucking risks to do something. To accept it. You know, to even, accept it, to do it, yeah. just because you love it. Even riding down the road, you know, all it takes is that person to have a shitty day and cross that center line and clip you. Right on, man. You know, or even head on, you know. I mean, anytime you get on your bike, it's a risk. You yeah. Know? And, I mean, you have to be willing to take it. Now, I don't care how, how good your helmet is. Oh, yeah. I don't care how fucking padded up your leathers are. You know, you know the human body can only accept yeah. so much fucking damage. You know? It's SDL Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Too, too soon? First of all, too soon. Sorry. <laughs> number three on the track, first in our hearts. <laughs> but. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway. Do it for Dale. But do it for Dale. Do it Dale. for Dale. To Dale. Mm -hmm. A&W today. Mm. Well, I'll tell you what, brother. I'm going to start to end things down here. You want to wind it down? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's been I a great do. show, man. It has been yeah. a great show. I do appreciate you guys inviting me to be here. I'm appreciating you Absolutely. finally It's a little up. different, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Yeah, wait, 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 you just watch yourself and hear yourself. Yeah, so right. so right. you're a single guy. Hold on. You're a single guy, right? <laughs> right. As, as far as I know, right? And, and to everybody in the fucking listening world right now who's stuck with this podcast, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> if you've stuck with us this long, I fucking love the shit out of you. Buy your lunch. <laughs> yeah, you're awesome. But... So you're a single guy. Just turned 30. Dirty. The dirty, dirty 30. 30. 30. And you're in the middle of this fucking COVID apocalypse, right? Right. covid elapse. Co yeah. Let me ask you this. Are you living your best life right now? Like, is there like pussy, like fucking on standby? <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? I'm a married man. Like, I still have to go to work every day and blah, blah, blah. So my Let life, me sniff your finger, God damn it. My life hasn't changed that much, man. It just means my weekends are more boring. My day-to-day -day, day -day operations haven't We're just going to leave that out, allegedly. Yeah? Allegedly. You're like the Captain Kirk of the MC world, man. Yeah, well, fuck yeah. <laughs> I could fuck be like, like my buddy Matt Hendrickson, God rest his soul. But he used to say, smell my elbow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, motherfucker, you got low standards. He's like, I get laid. God damn it, man. <laughs> Smell my own. What's it like being a sex symbol? I forget. Man. It's a whole other world. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Get the fuck out of here. God, you just oh. get your toes like my beautiful one in a oh, daily basis. I'm telling you. Fucking <laughs> Jesus. I'm going oh. to get bitched at the new dishes. Oh, you know. It's like Patrick's over here just like, do the dishes. How's that go? <laughs> Bitches come. Bitches come. <laughs> What's wrong? Are you okay? Are you mad at me? Ugh. Oh, man. I'm fucking 30. I can't talk <laughs> about that either now. <laughs> what do you want for dinner? I don't know what you want for dinner. I don't know what you want for dinner. That's, you an, know, hour. <laughs> That's, That's an hour of my life I'll never get back uh, on a daily add, basis. Add to this, when you, when you get over 50, this is what starts happening. You go, huh? What'd you say? <laughs> I don't know. What? Huh? You just like asking what and huh from different rooms of the house. You don't even fucking know anymore. Dude, I get fished out. Nobody can hear I anything. Really remember I just go, uh huh, yep. You know Smile. the three stages of sex, right? No, I used to. Drop knowledge on us. <laughs> Drop knowledge. So, anyway, the first stage of sex is when you're young, okay? You'll do it anywhere, everywhere, all the time. Doesn't right on. matter. Well, as you get older and you have a family, you start being a little more discreet, so it's got to be behind closed doors. Right? Oh, that's, that. yeah. No, yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Right? Okay, you understand. Yeah. Now, the third stage of sex is when you're walking past each other in the hallway. You look at each other and go, fuck you. That's, That's the third true. stage. Wow. See? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I haven't hit that part yet. <laughs> but, you I know, it, it's, it's life, man. What are you going to do? You know, you can't well, you be. still in the second stage. You are, right? You can't be fucking 20 something <laughs> forever. I get it, you know, and I, I don't regret anything and fucking love the wife, and I would never fucking, you know, I don't know. I don't. I, I can't picture my fucking world going without her. But at the same fucking don't time, don't think about it, dirty. Don't think about it. 
Don't think about it. Uh, yeah, I'm still waiting for my midlife crisis. Oh, you've already had it. <laughs> Have I? Middle of it. I don't know. I think I've got three, I think. <laughs> That's where I sell the Harley and get a gold wing and a Corvette. No, 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 no. Oh. Fuck the gold wing. Fuck the gold wing. Join a country club. <laughs> Fuck Chevy. Start talking about politics. <laughs> well, I just want to say, oh, you reminded me of something you're talking about sex, the three stages of sex. You know the difference between uh, kinky and perverted? Oh. All right. When you're kinky, you use the chicken feather. When you're perverted, you use the whole damn chicken. <laughs> And on that happy note, folks. Oh, hold on. I'm going to also go. No, no, no. I got to go to PSA. I got to go to PSA. I don't okay. give a shit. We are going to go an hour, oh, hour yeah. 40. Who gives a shit? Don't right? use live chicken. We're going strong, right? Joe Rogan goes three goddamn hours, goddamn it. We're going to fucking do. I'm going to do a little PSA because this is fucking important. I was having this conversation oh, at work the other day because it's important. All right? This is an yeah. editing nightmare for me, but that's okay. Go no, ahead. don't edit shit. Leave yeah. it all Fuck in. Fuck that. Leave it all in. PSA time. I'm going to PSA. For all you gentlemen out there who are thinking about using a whole chicken. <laughs> no, I wasn't going to go there. Okay, good. good. But if you're a gentleman out there in the uh, silver years of your life, and you're thinking about using a performance-enhancing drug like Viagra, <laughs> Cialis, Panther, Google it, um, realize that you have to take that way before time or yeah. way before you you plan on doing the deed because here's what's going to happen you're going to take it and you're going to get a natural boner a boner made of love and you're going to fucking <laughs> throw it to the fucking old lady right you're going to think you're a rock star you're going to think yeah fucking i did it right here's the problem you did it on your own and afterwards right when the fucking old lady is like, oh, okay, great. It stays. <laughs> Here's what happens. That pill kicks in, mm -hmm. right? And you have a fucking raging goddamn hard on for the next three goddamn hours. And you got to try to coerce your fucking old lady. And it, well, we need round two, three, four, five, and six. <laughs> and you have an awkward two hours afterwards. So just be prepared. All it is is a kickstand so you don't fall out of bed. Be prepared to take that motherfucker ahead of time. And it's important. A good 45 minutes to an hour. 45 minutes to an hour. 45 minutes to an hour. You take okay. the boner pill. Good. You fucking good. You, you set it up. You set the magic. Do some foreplay. <laughs> I don't know. Magic. Throw a finger in her butt. Fucking tell her she's special. <laughs> right? And then you can fuck like you're 18 oh, again. Because fucking A, man. I'll tell you right now. That little blue pill. <laughs> that little hilarious. blue pill, man. I'm telling you, it's it like crazy. it's the best. You what's, took it. What's you don't even need it. I took, took it. it. I don't even need what's it. What's the yeah. commercial say? If you, uh, uh, an erection lasting more than four hours, go to the emergency room. Yeah. I, fuck that, man. Four hours. I'm calling a fucking porn director. <laughs> <laughs> you four know, hours. Yeah. I'm just changing up the SD card. Right? <laughs> 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 I might as well make use of it. You know. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm going to go out and etch diamonds, man. Can we, <laughs> can we get the video camera? <laughs> I'm sending dick pics to an ex. What are you talking about? Damn. Uh, what are you been up to? <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. But Allegedly. Oh, oh man. man. Well, it's that time. Yeah, it's, yeah, it is that time. You didn't get drunk this time. I didn't. I stayed relatively sober. Relatively sober. That's good. We didn't have Vito here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that motherfucker like poured like fucking a bottle. Man, fucking drinking that bottle and a half of scotch. What I hear. Fucking hundred proof. Fucking. I haven't edited that one. I think I'm gonna go back to when I edit it. I'm gonna get like a little clip of every time he poured your glass, <laughs> and I'll put them all together. You and gotta I'm... respect the guy though that fucking gets you drunk. Hey, you know, and you he know. had some pretty decent stuff with some scotch he bought from a wine dealer. Hey, man, you know, it, and that's why I like that guy. You know, that's the thing. The whole he's his own man. The being a biker is a fucking it's it's an abstract idea. You know, it's like, all right, it allows for personal expression. No offense, but no, you were almost stereotypical. Facial hair, long hair, rides Harley, wears leather, right? Yeah, and nothing wrong with that. No, that's the roots, right? Right. You're the Godfather, right? Ooh. And then you see me, right? Facial hair, short hair, rides performance Harley, right? And then you see, uh, you know, the sex icon over here. <laughs> Facial hair, studly, short Studly. hair, 
Performance Harley. Oh, it's a road yada, name. Yada, yada, yada. Taking fucking Viagra. That's Taking a road Viagra. Name. <laughs> it's a road name, right? Studley. Studley. Oh, God. Man. First of all, you mix <laughs> Viagra with Benadryl. Uh, <laughs> then you're a champion. Uh -huh. Then you're a champion, right? The Viagra keeps you up, and the Benadryl keeps you numb. <laughs> Google it. But wow. factual. So, well... I guess what we can take away from this episode is that uh, we're all fucked in the head. <laughs> we're all fucked in the head. COVID-19 can suck a dick. Prison sucks. Prison. Er, yeah. Fuck law, the police. Law, the law enforcement can be assholes. That's right. Never trust a motherfucker. Bikers are awesome. Bikers are awesome. Being a biker is awesome. Two wheels is awesome. If you don't ride, you don't count. And gold wings <laughs> suck. No, gold wings don't suck. You're just a nerd if you ride one. Just because oh, you got good okay. credit don't mean nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. We pissed a lot of people off in this episode, and far be it from us not to do that. I don't a know 720 show. score at 1,000 miles don't make you a bike. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, right? Oh. Oh. oh, we always get the same one. You can always tell the new wannabe, too, you know? Yeah. It's like... Yeah, when I when I get up, I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get a bike. Well, what are you gonna get? I'm gonna buy that bagger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which one? Yeah, right. That's the Harley bagger. Um, a street collide. Yeah. <laughs> Let me guess. You want a 30 inch big wheel on it? Let yeah. How how many watts do you have in your stereo? Yeah, and it's gonna be black. <sighs> yeah, it'll be black. Oh, I guess Patrick's fucking done. Patrick's he done. He's had enough fun. That's the, that's the fucking exit right and that there. Is, no, no, no. Just you got to sit leave. your ass back. No, no get no, up no. and leave. No, no, no. no. Don't listen to Tank. No, you don't listen to no fuck you because he's got to have his words of wisdom. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, you need words of wisdom. Words of wisdom. Now, yeah. let's see. Gophers was don't be a douchebag. Yeah. Uh, Mongo was uh, don't forget where you came from. Yep. Uh, Boomer, no, uh, Boomer just wants to kill shit. Um, Basically, just be yourself. That's all it is. Well, be yourself. Be yourself. Cool. That's wow. That's deep, man. I, wow. That's all there is to it. That's all right. Hey, you know you're did alive. Did you think of that all on your own? I did. I did. <laughs> Google it. Google it. <laughs> Google it. It's fast. Do yourself. Statement. Ride fast. Ride hard. Ride fast. Ride hard. Live fast. Don't die. That's right. Or yeah. ride well hard. <laughs> <laughs> Take a Viagra. Take a Viagra. Forty-five <laughs> minutes. Real. Yeah, you get yeah. intimate with your gas tank. That's right. <laughs> On that happy note, uh, starts hitting me in the chin. Right. <laughs> Every bump. Every bump. Oh god. Oh. Oh dear lord, we do love to freaking go down our little fucking rabbit holes here in the Vikings yeah. lifestyle. It's... But that's what we're all about. There's no rhyme or reason to it. There's no script. There's no censor. In fact, we really don't give a fuck. Yeah. We care. We're just having fun. We're just some guys, some greasy bikers from Janesville, Wisconsin. Look it up on the Google machine. Yep. And we're out there. Uh, so this is Tank Dirty signing off. I just want to say, uh, Dirty, what you got to say, man? Uh, well, buy bullets right now. Buy bullets. bullets. Buy bullets. That's actually really good advice. And spam. Spam is always good. Any kind of canned goods. Any kind of canned good is good. You're going to buy canned goods. If you go into a certain grocery store, you can only get four canned vegetables per trip. Go to multiple grocery stores. I say just go to the, go to the friggin' uh, self-checkout and check canned, out four times, you know? Canned chicken. That's all right. Canned tuna, spam, and vegetables, and you'll be fine. What was that movie, Better Off Dead? We're having French tonight. We got French <laughs> fries, French dressing, and to drink, Peru. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking drink oh. whiskey, do wheelies, hail Satan. You hail know what I mean? <laughs> Whatever fucking blows your skirt up or flips your Twinkie, man. This is Tank and Dirty signing out. Keep in mind, the most dangerous part on your motorcycle is the nut that connects the seat to the handlebars. See ya.